This week's episode of the Co-Optional Podcast is proudly sponsored by Squarespace. Get 10% off your first order at squarespace.com slash co-optional. Create your own professional-looking website with no prior knowledge required at squarespace.com slash co-optional. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the Co-Optional Podcast. It is the 14th of April 2015. It's a magical day for us all because we're getting rid of both Dodger and Jesse from the country very soon. Yep, that's true. You'll be worse for it. It'll be yeah. worse. You'll miss us so bad. I won't. So worse. It'll be the worse. So worse. You've <laughs> 10 seconds in, you make up a new word already. That's fantastic. Yeah, you're worser. running. You're running off to go deal with um, some issues with CD Projekt, I believe. You're going to go look at The Witcher, I think. Some issues? Yeah. You can go yell at them about The Witcher Witcher board game not working properly. Oh, true. Go yell at them for that. It's like, you ruined our show. I'll let them know. We'll involve involve some vodka first. Good. And then we'll be like, that is. Hold up. (laughs) You know your Witcher board game, it just doesn't work. That would be fantastic. Vodka starts five hours from now. I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) I was going to say, if you're going to tolerate Dodger on the same plane as you for the next 11 hours, I don't really blame you. If he's going to tolerate me, if I'm going to tolerate him on that plane. 13 hours. There's not Please. enough entertainment in the world. Knowing our luck, we're going to get on this plane, nothing's going to work, and we're going to have to talk about our feelings. It'll be like <laughs> everyone's sitting around talking. We'll have already asked oh. for alcohol, but then none of the technology will work, and we'll be like, well, it's a shit. Now what? Sorry, we only have non-alcoholic beer, and I just open the plane and jump out. <laughs> Damn. That is a, that is a move. <laughs> you don't know what it's like to deal with her on a regular basis. Our special guest, who thankfully would not have to deal with her on a regular basis today, goes by the name of Game Over Greggy, also known as Greg Miller. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm honored. Thank you for putting up with my stupid schedule. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. They're just as bad as you, if not worse. Mostly worse. (laughs) So you used to work for IGN. Of course, a lot of people probably know you from there. That's no longer true. You've joined us in the realm of the independents. So why don't you tell us exactly what it is that you now do on a daily basis and what your organization is all about? Man, right now I work uh, for a site uh, I founded called kindoffunny.com. We're a bunch of YouTubers and Let's Plays and Twitch streams, and we're you know just trying to figure out what the hell we do, because we don't know. But it's uh, you know five best friends quit IGN to go out and make the content they believed in for the community they believe in. So we go out every day and do Colin and Greg Live on Twitch, and then we put up Let's Plays and podcasts over on YouTube.com slash kindoffunny and YouTube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Fantastic. What is this hashtag team fat? Please explain this to me. Oh, I understand that I'm in a miniature box, but I am overweight. Like, I have all Join this going club. on. So, exactly. And, like, I got sick of it really early on, people trying to guilt me about it. So, I just owned it. The fact that you're goddamn right I'm fat and I'll eat what I want and I'll die at 50 of a heart attack, but I'll be happy, motherfucker. Absolutely. I mean, who the hell wants I, to be 95 and out. fit? I mean, come on. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to get to that. The, the, the scariest thing I think about is actually getting to 90 or whatever and being like, your hands can't move as quick, so you can't play the games you want to play and you can't do any of the stuff you. That sounds terrible. No way. Say, that's me right board. now. So I can't imagine what I'd be like at 90. To be honest, exactly. let's, let's be fair. Everyone's being completely reasonable. They're removing the burden from society. We're going to eat cake and like it. Right. Exactly. I don't want to have. Uh, removing I'm the burden you- of cake. <laughs> no, re- removing the burden of cake and carrying the I am removing the burden of cake from you. You no longer have to eat the cake because it's mine <laughs> I now. I will eat it so that you do not have to. Indeed. No, we're jumping on My a grenade. Dream. We're I should take on this burden for you. My dream is to be that super fit old lady who's just like ripped out of her mind. And everybody's like, I don't know what's going on with her or like why she chose this, but stay out of her so way. Lonely. That's my plan. So yeah. very lonely. I'll have so many cats and workout equipment and that's it. Jesus. <laughs> that's my plan. Cats on workout equipment. Just like you just, you, yes. I can imagine you just with a whip. I just use like, them as weights. Psh, 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 get going. Move faster. 
don't. <laughs> just a terrible idea. Please don't do that. I, I just, you're the kind of person that would. Don't. Just making you aware of that. Ah, uh, Jesse, welcome to the show. Welcome. Hi, I want to point out that I just noticed that Greg has a uh, Ali Moss uh, Resistance 3 thing in the background. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know I know my Ollie. I know my Ollie artwork. All right. Uh, anyway. Hi, everyone. I am super excited to... I'm, like, jittery. I've been cruising at, like, a 20 all day. A 20 out of 10, not out of 100. That'd be weird. Jesus. And, that's, uh, the op- that's not cruising. That's barreling through it like a bullet. I'm trying to. <laughs> I set my alarm for 5.30. I was going to, like, I got stuff to do. And I woke up at 7 because I set my alarm for 5.30 p.m. Nice. And nice. Uh, I'm just a mess. So I've just been... <laughs> All morning, just going, just going at full speed, and I am gonna get on this plane and be like, stewardess. Do they call them stewardesses anymore? Flight attendant. Alcohol. <laughs> alcohol. Bring me alcohol and uh, illegally downloaded Game of Thrones episodes, and let's do this shit. I got hours to kill. Let's no, do this shit. Don't ruin Game of Thrones by watching the shitty bootleggy ones. Yeah, get them. Uh, HBO Now, man. It's actually worth... I, I, I watch I, I, I watch it on the I night. Think he's, we well, had a few I think problems, he's referencing okay. the, the five new episodes that oh, have been given ahead of time. Oh, the leaked ones. Yeah. Don't give in to pirates. Don't give don't in to give pirates. In. Not touching don't it with a 10-foot Jesse. pole. Not happening. Oh, no. Literally, they're, I think they were in hours became the most downloaded thing ever. <laughs> like, well, I think of course. That was, the most pirated thing ever within hours. Like people were like, yeah. I gotta know what happens. And the best part is, and this is uh, no spoilers, but apparently the end of the four episodes uh, ends with a cliffhanger, and everyone's pissed. So they put, <laughs> they put four episodes. It was some online. sort of trap. It's actually yeah, viral advertising so for HBO now. now. They have to wait weeks and weeks to see that's it. And I was like, Oh, that's what you get, motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah that's brilliant really like the, HBO maybe move. The best troll ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I ain't touching it. Like. It, it, I, I think it was ju- there was a degree of justification when people didn't have a way to get it. But at least now in the US, you can get HBO Now. There really yeah. isn't kind of a reason anymore. It's like, okay, they gave you what you asked for, which is to unbundle HBO. They gave you on demand. If you're still pirating it, then you wanted free shit. Right. It's and, time to put up or shut up, right? Yeah, All exactly. People, it's easy when you can't have the option. You're like, oh, I would pay for it, but I can't. So yes, of course, I would have done that, but I can't do it. I mean, that's just what's going on. I mean, yeah. yeah, but an so HBO now. Like <laughs> <laughs> HBO now has been coming for a while. I think uh, uh, a friend of a friend, his job was one of like three guys to sit and monitor the stats of HBO Go versus uh, HBO the service. Mm-hmm. And when HBO Go was getting more active users than the HBO service, like subscriber base, they were like, flip the switch, we'll do HBO now. Like, that was a thing they've been planning forever. So, you know, it's the best of every world, HBO now. So get that shit. It's really good. Yeah, I I had a couple of, there was a couple of hiccups on the first episode but then again we did watch it as soon as it came out when literally the entire universe was jumping on it so oh yeah i i, I was blown away that hbo go held up on our end it didn't historically what happens yeah yeah historically in san francisco when it goes live on the east coast and you try to get on hbo go it's just it's it's all done and down but it worked fine right. yeah so i tried it it was fine i get to watch silicon valley i can now watch i think all of boardwalk empire as well which i was meaning to do anyway and all sorts of other stuff so yeah i've been watching uh, daredevil which is surprisingly good Right. Oh, yes. three oh, great. The second oh. episode fight scene where it was in the hallway. In the hallway, all one so take. Good. It was so yeah. John Woo esque. They did the whole thing. It looked like they'd done it in one take, one camera view only. They did. Yeah, Fantastic. They said they did. The, the thing about Daredevil is, the, I'm like, I think eight or nine episodes in now, and every episode starts the same way. Where I'm like, oh yeah, I'll watch another, and I'm kind of into it, and then something happens, and I'm hooked the entire time, and something crazy happens. Yeah, yeah. It's very Batman Begins esque. It's. It's fun like Arrow is fun, you know? Yeah. T- taking maybe yeah. like a not A-list super popular character and making him really interesting all of a sudden. So, right. yeah, it's pretty good. But, you know, if you have HBO now available, it's worth checking out. Obviously, it's not available in all countries, so I certainly understand that. But yeah, HBO now in particular is pretty good service. And I'm glad they finally brought it out because I could not be asked with all of the nonsense with, with TV. With cable? With yes, that. cable. <laughs> Screw cable and everything about it. It's like, I want to watch on my time, not yours. That simple. And I'm not going to sit down and watch 20 minutes of commercials for every hour of content. Bugger that. Mm. 
disgraceful. I don't even know why we're talking about television because we only have a two-hour show today. We're actually on a hard out at 5 p.m. <laughs> Eastern because these guys are going to get on a plane. But congratulations. We wasted the first 20 minutes talking about television. That's good. That's good. That's a good start to the show. Uh, we will be talking about the games we've been playing this week. Then we'll talk about the news. And then we'll end the show and that will be it. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes, that's the plan and we're sticking to it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely nothing remotely complicated about this show or the people on this show. Simple as that. So, wait, I'm a complicated person. I, you I have layers. Man? I'm like, I'm like, strongly a, disagree. Are you a sharp dressed man? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm wearing an internet joke t shirt. I'm not okay. sharp dressed at all. Not a sharp dressed man. Okay, <laughs> no. fair enough. Well, Greg, why don't you tell us about what you've been playing this week? Oh man, so it's it's been Handsome co- Collection, the Borderlands Handsome Collection. I've been pl- I played through the pre sequel with my girlfriend. We did the whole you know two t- TVs in the room co op, mm. hanging out, being a lovely little video game couple. And I just beat the story in that and started going through the side missions. And honestly, right now I'm just killing time until State of Decay One Year uh, Survival Edition comes out. Ah, uh, okay. That was pretty good. I I liked State of Decay when it, when it eventually came oh, yeah. out on PC. The PC version was spot on. It was a, it was a fun little. It's the only zombie survival game where you don't have to deal with screaming ten year olds. So to right. me, that's a plus. <laughs> See, that's the whole thing. Is yeah, like I. I've always looked at, you know, DayZ and H1Z1 and been like, those are games I should get into, but something about them doesn't click for me. And when it came to 360 State of Decay, I loved it, had a great time doing Let's Plays with it. But then when it got actually released, released and had the final version, it was right after E3. I burned out. I didn't get into it. And so now I'm excited just to have this and get lost in it and the beautiful Xbox One graphics and all the content from the other games and all that shit. Just to run around and just... Just, you know, look at every house and go in every drawer and bring everything back in my rucksack. That's all I want. Is this the point where I get to start being snarky about the PC Master Race and go beautiful Xbox One graphics and just annoy the hell out of everyone around me? I'd prefer well, I mean, to you... it, but if we need yeah. to fight, then we can end this friendship as soon as it's We begun. don't have the time to fight. <laughs> this is a short show. I will not yeah, go to, into to it. Be... You can't go PC Master Race after making a like ten minute video about why the PC version of, of Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat 10 is sucks. broken. It's oh worst. god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh fuck that. That was uh, that was infuriating. I was looking forward to playing a bit of story mode this morning and then it tries to download thirty install packs and half yeah. the shit isn't available and just doesn't work. I can't even get it to run. Yeah, yeah some people are like I that. Have the PS4 version, it works just fine. I'm sure it does. Yeah. <laughs> Consoles. That's fine. Sometimes yeah. they work. Although, to be fair, with the latest generation, sometimes they bloody well don't. That's the problem. I, I can't stand turning on my console and every bloody time having to wait for an update to come down. It's annoying. But, okay, well, yeah, but then... I, th- oh, don't, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this conversation? <laughs> because I know what show you used to host. <laughs> Firmwares are annoying, but they are there and they just do their thing. Uh, uh, over here on the play, the X-Split Today crashes during our live show on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. And then I try to go out and the, the PC that's been pl- plugged into the internet nonstop and turned on and off every day. So I was like, oh, by the way, I got 12 updates. Give me a sec. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. You knew you could have been downloading these anytime. Why now? You could have told it not to do that. It's an option, PCs. All I don't know options. how to talk to it. I don't know how to. PS4 can't, can't even run X-Split. <laughs> <laughs> oh god let's stop this immediately <laughs> okay <laughs> oh my oh man I-, I wish i was playing mortal kombat 10 like i said it's it looks slick it- i'm looking forward to trying out the new roster of characters there's loads of options as to how you want to play each character i like the fact that they've got all these three different styles for each character so i'm going to look forward to trying to find the character i like and probably it being the one that i didn't want it to be i don't know if you found that mm-hmm. with mortal kombat 9 where it's like, oh, I'm going to go in and I've got to play Smoke. I love Smoke. Smoke's amazing. And then you realize, I hate playing Smoke. And then you realize, my favorite character is Kung Lao now. I don't like Kung Lao, but he, I, I can win with him. So we just pick him. Pretty much I- every time I play a Mortal Kombat game, I'm like, I'm going to start playing somebody who isn't Scorpion. Uh-huh. And then in the end, I'm like, I still fucking love Scorpion. <laughs> like, that's Get still over my here. main, no matter what. There's it, it, the game has, and it's not a problem. It's just something. It's a peeve I have, and it's the same thing that Injustice had, where you're in story mode, and it's you know you're doing the QT BS. Oh, the and then, QTEs. Ugh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like within the first five minutes, you're QTEing against Scorpion and oh, stuff. Oh, lovely. So like, but then it jumps into the fights, and so. The craziest thing about it is you're in the story, and so, you know, you flip off this thing, you're about to fight Scorpion, and then 
suddenly it's two rounds or three rounds. So it's like you beat him and then it's like, huh, I'm back. Let's do this shit. Like, wait a minute. Hold on. Like, it's a really weird. It's just a peeve I have because it takes you out of like the story. And then if you're there for the fighting, you're like, why the hell am I doing the story mode? It's like a very weird form of storytelling. But they they're, for, they're forcing too. you to go through the story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pretty It's pretty silly, but it's it's There weren't any QTs in 9, were there? It was just cutscene fight, cutscene fight. Yeah, yes. but it was, it it's was the same. It's injustice Yeah. It was the same sort of like... The story's happening, and and uh, you're presented with this situation where you're like, I've got to defeat this guy so that, you know, we can move on. And and you have to go through, like, three rounds of fighting yeah, that guy. Yeah, but it's like, and like three like... rounds of defeating him, which is very <laughs> weird and silly. Yeah, like, down... this doesn't work with the story at all. <laughs> the three-round thing is a bit weird like that, isn't it? It's it's just yeah. like, hang on a minute, maybe you should... I, I, the thing is that if you had one round, it would be, like, 80% cutscenes and 20% gameplay. That's the real problem with it, I think. Mm -hmm. It's true. And I also... I, I did really, really like the way that Nine did their story mode. Like, the way oh, that they great. switched between characters yeah. and had you, like, like forced you to experience playing all of the I love how they killed off 98% like well. of the roster. That was they fantastic. That like, they're all dead. That they is, just killed all of them. That is this as well. You, there are chapters, and each chapter focuses on... Yeah. Like, that's exactly what this is. Mm. It's uh, been that way again, for a while, though, right? Like, I think it was... I mean, because I, I know it from Injustice, of playing through that yeah, storyline and getting everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Injustice had a great setup. I love the three fights, because I'm so bad at fighting games, but I, I'm such a big DC comic nerd that I'd play through it, and then when the fights got too tough, I would just put the controller down, because if you lost twice, then the guy just stood there like a dummy, and you got to beat him, and then get the next cutscene. Nice. <laughs> it's, I mean, they borrowed a few things, like the environmental uh, hits from Injustice, that's in there, which is, and you can turn those off, which is quite nice, because I imagine the competitive scene is probably not going to want those on. If they're going to play it at Evo or whatever, they'll probably end up turning those those features off, but... They're mm -hmm. nice. It's a it's a nice little extra element. You've got to be. It's it's nice that each each stage isn't just a background. That's one of the gripes I've got with a lot of fighting games. Hey, we've got twenty stages. They're all backdrops for exactly the is same it, thing. You know, they're sweet JPEGs. Oh yeah, it's like wow, that's absolutely beautiful. It doesn't do anything, <laughs> but it's beautiful nonetheless. There's one map that I died on repeatedly just because I wanted to do something. Uh, it's the the dock where like the background. There's the the wrecked ships and the crazy shit. Yeah. There's a body that periodically splashes up in the air and flies down, you can grab that body and use it to whack your opponent. <laughs> I spent 25 minutes trying to grab that fucking body. I was like, I just want to whack a guy with this body. And it would never appear when I was over in that section. I was like, I'm getting that fucking body. So I literally just stopped so just lost. and waited. <laughs> oh, yeah, I kept w losing and just waiting and timing out. I was like, this is my only objective is to hit this <laughs> damn body. Once you do it, it feels real good. <laughs> you, do, you do it, you eject the game, put it away, trade it in. Like, like, I'm, I'm, done. Done. I'm done. I'm done. Never getting done. better. It's all we need. I'm okay. Absolutely all we need. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it looks. I mean, it looks good. It, it seems to play well from what I've played of it. But obviously, until they fix all of those problems with the PC version, and it might even be Valve's fault because of the, they've never done that streaming thing before. Like, Blizzard does it, and it works fine. Like, all the Blizzard games have that streaming functionality, but Steam's never done it before, and it's they jammed it into the DLC um, system instead, and they had it download that way, and it just didn't fucking work. Like, so many people are complaining on the forums that half of their game modes aren't there. I don't have story mode, tower mode, and online. So basically, the three main game modes, I don't have them. But I do have right. training... That's with half the, the characters. Take, Take the, the time. hint, TB. Come yeah, on. TB. Like, when, you, when you've gotten you good enough at training, then, then they'll give you something else. They, re they grade out the credits. The credits. It's like no one wanted to be associated <laughs> with this piece of crap. <laughs> so, yeah, that's fun. And then uh, apparently a bunch of people have had problems with GTA 5 on PC this morning because the DRM system that Rockstar runs, um, our social club just went down so no one could log in. So that was great. Welcome to the new age of video games. Uh, yeah. yeah. You Digital. like multiple DRM features? It's a shame, actually, because uh, GTA 5 on PC runs beautifully. It is fantastic. Looks great, feels great. 60 frames per second plus. I was getting more like 90 to 100. Rolling down the street. Feels really smooth, really nice. Draw distance is ridiculous. Can't eat. It's like, there's a car all the way over there, and I know I can drive to it. Nothing's gonna appear in front of me while I'm flying around. Like, you know, <laughs> like the previous versions did, especially like the 360 version. But there is that Rockstar Social Club bullshit that was apparently causing some problems. So, and but it's you, also you know sixty five. You have to run with your crew. Your crew is so important. Don't Ride you want to run? Man. Yeah, I exactly. don't want to run with my crew. I'm a, I'm, you don't talk that way about your crew. I'm an antisocial piece of shit. I don't want my crew. <laughs> 
Anti- <laughs> the rock star is anti-social club. <laughs> he never had a crew to begin with. Indeed. No one likes me, so <laughs> I don't have y'all's. a crew. <laughs> I ride alone. Indeed. <laughs> they call me the lone warrior. The lone warrior. The lone no warrior. one calls you that. No, no that, calls, that's my no wrestling. That's my that. wrestling stage name. I know what you're talking about. No. I'm the lone warrior. No. <laughs> no. It's because nobody likes me. <laughs> oh, dear. It's not by choice. It's been no, <laughs> very much not. Uh, anything else you've been playing this week, Greg? No, I mean, that's the main stuff, right? Let's play stuff here and there, but mainly I've been just hacking away at that handsome collection. Uh, I played some Bastion on PS4. I love Bastion. I love it so fantastic. much on 360. Yeah. It's beautiful. Absolutely awesome game. Decent amount of replayability too, thanks to the right, way yeah. the way that the game modes work. The optional difficulty shrines that you can activate, I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I love that risk reward, right? Of yeah, you, you equip this potion or whatever, and it's gonna, you know, make guys give you two times the XP, but they're two times as difficult and so mm-hmm. on and so forth. And that new game plus actually is like you need to beat again to get the real story. So you know, yeah. that's cool. Anything Super Giant makes I'll probably enjoy, at least if their last two games are anything to go by, so should should do the job, but Bastion is just fantastic. It always has been. Love yeah. that game to death. Happy it's finally on PlayStation. Yes. Jesse, you've been playing anything yeah. this week? Uh, yeah. Besides, besides a bunch of Mortal Kombat, uh, the game I've been playing on PC lately is Hero Generations. I am a little oh, bit in love with that I've game. I've been looking at that one. Yeah, what's that about? Uh, it is a game that is basically a turn-based roguelike game where mm-hmm. you are... A, you start as a character who's like 17 or whatever, and each turn is a year of your life. Okay. And so everywhere you move, the monsters, you know, they move the same. So if you move, they make a move. But every turn, every move is a year of your life. And so you need to build up towns. You need to go fight. You need to uh, hunt for treasure and cut down trees. Usual stuff, but it's a sort of top-down grid-based game. Mm-hmm. And then uh, at a certain point, you need to go settle down and find a mate. And... Yeah. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. And the more the more taverns you build, the more mates you can find. And then you have to like figure out what stats work best for you and some will only go out with you if you have, you know, a certain reputation for being a badass or if you have enough money or you know the usual stuff. And then there are many there's like commoner and beauty and nice catch and so you have to find all these different <laughs> nice mates. catch. That's a yeah. class. Okay. Yeah, and so then once you once you find them, you have a child, and then 16 years go by, and depending on how much life you have left and how much life your mate has left, uh, you may not be alive when your child is born. So it's actually, mm. you like pass down, so if you find an item, you pass that item down through generations. So I had a wood sword that went through like 17 generations. It was like, <laughs> this wood sword is the greatest wood sword there ever was. And you <laughs> just, Children, let me tell you the legacy of this wood <laughs> sword. It's pretty much what it is. And For 70 so, generations, we couldn't afford anything better. Here you go, have this. <laughs> and, and based on what you did before, you get cards that you draw for the new generation okay. and this new kid. And uh, also based on when you had the kid, you it determines how many cards you get. Right. So you can have anywhere. I've had anywhere from five cards to nine cards to 13 cards at one point. Just because I was an amazing... I, I think I had like... Ten, I was like a hero level and I... I think I had a kid at like 50. So mm-hmm. this kid was like coming out the gate. He had like 104 years of life left at 16. He had like a giant sword. He's like, what up, haters? It was great. And um, <laughs> so then there's traits you can get. And there's Charmer and there's like a Golden Child, which is the one that gives you, you know, a bunch of stat boosts. There's Builder. There's all sorts of things. Are those so traits objective- random or is it something that you can earn by passing it down? You can earn by passing it down. But right. then when you card flip, you, there's a chance you can find other traits too. Okay. And so based on all the stuff you're doing, you create better and better generations. And sometimes you get kids who are very good at exploring. So you need to know what they're good at because sometimes you're going to get a kid who sucks at fighting and there's nothing you can do about it. And so you're just like, all right, well, I'm going to try and avoid fighting. I'm going to go treasure hunting. And I'm going to go into forests and explore. And I'm going to go to towns and build up the towns because over time as well, the, ta- the buildings you add to the towns crumble away. So you have to keep going to them and rebuilding them and refurbishing them and keeping them alive. And, and Why can't someone else really do cool. that shit? It's, you're too busy. Eh. Every time you move, a year of your life disappears. You want to spend That's that true. fixing a fucking church roof? That's true. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be very, very careful about what you do. Then you can leave the initial starting zone and go to, uh, I think there are a total of like seven, eight, 12 more worlds, something like oh, that. There's right. a bunch of other worlds. A lot of replayability. So once you leave the... 
Yeah, once you leave that one world, you can go to a desert one. So we went to the desert one on a stream I did, and this giant thing called like the data squid, I think it's one of the, it was this <laughs> giant ugly thing. squid. And he can keep exploding through the ground, so you never know when he's gonna like where he's gonna show up. And so this asshole kept kicking my uh the dragon in the first zone so much easier than a data squid, and he was like, I'm coming for your ass. <laughs> and so you have missions and quests, and, and one of them is like build a monument. One of them is clear all the forests. One of them is you know clear all the dungeons. And then of course the big one is defeat whatever boss is in that area. Mm. And so for this area was this data squid, and I just I couldn't beat him. So I my hero died, and my generations failed, and I lost. And there is no more future me's. But um, it's a lot of fun, and there it's was a much blast. rejoicing. It seems like yes. it might be worth having a look at. That sounds like it might be up my alley. I like the idea that it's, it's a kind of old school rogue like mixed with a dating sim, mixed with civilization. That's a yeah. interesting it combination. Like, well, it's and when you first started talking about it, it sounded like Massive Chalice. That yeah, double yeah. Game. yeah. But then you went into the whole town building that takes a year to fish to the church roof, and you're like, well, no, but same idea. <laughs> Go through, yeah, kill a bunch of things, breed, get better people. Indeed. But th but then there are things that uh, instead of going to fix stuff or whatever, you can get a hammer. And the hammer, if you just walk over it, it still takes a year of life, but you don't have to do anything. You just walk over it, and it's like, 40 plus years added to the building. You're like, yay, Damn. it won't crumble. And you just it's go around hammer. and do your stuff. Yeah. And so you just have to determine what you're going to do. It's it's It doesn't seem like it's strategy at first, but eventually you're like, oh, shit, I need to know how to actually think when I play this game. So it's well, one of them. That's the problem. I, I, think their, I think their biggest problem they have as a game is screen usage. Like oh, I know I'm saying that video you did. Like half the screen mm -hmm. is literally white. Like it's pointless to yeah. spread it out as much as they did. I don't know what they're doing with their UI. I, I'm not sure why that is, and it might be because some areas later are bigger and they need that space. Oh, okay. But the three areas that I went to literally were just like w one half of that white screen they had, and then right. there's the whole other bottom side. And I was like, it seems like a waste of space. Like there could be other things that. added there. Yeah. Yeah. So, fair enough. There you go. That's what I've been playing. Mm. I played a bunch more Killing Floor Two. That game's looking like it's going to be good. Played a bit more. How long is this out? Uh, it's hitting early access towards the end of the month, which is going to be okay. four. Four of the ten classes will be available, and then they're going to be adding the rest over the course of about six months. They were saying. So I'm looking forward to them putting in the apparently they're doing like a gunslinger class, which is going to be very pistol orientated. So I'm looking forward to playing that. I'm playing the Berserker at the minute, and it's so much better than Killing Floor One's Berserker, which was just like, hey, just kind of hack away. They've got a parry system in the game now. They've got a hammer, which also has a shotgun built into it. So you hit them, and a shotgun shell explodes on their head when you hit them on the head with it. So as it, it should, as it should. So it it it's just you hit a regular guy with it, they just bits everywhere just <laughs> arms here toes are over there you, know, they just, you just decorate the walls with them you can hit a big guy with it and it'll stagger them and they can follow them up with a combo yeah it's a, they have a giant chainsaw as well called i think called the eviscerator so they've got some fun weapons in that thing and it plays really well so i'm looking forward to them developing that more i don't want to play too much more of it because i would really like to just wait until they've got all the classes in it's the same with like darkest dungeon i just don't want to play it anymore right. until they're done with it and then i'll play That's the complete the problem with version all. whenever the early access stuff comes up or a beta or whatever i i got now i've limited now i'll give it like an hour I'll play it, and I'm like, oh, this is great. I love where it's going, or it's not going to be my kind of game, and bounce. Because no matter how much I like it, it's going to suck to go back and replay those same four hours, five hours, six hours you already put in. Yeah, I mean, I really feel like early access has the potential to hurt a release version. I mean, yes, you might get a better one, but for those who played it initially, it's less compelling when the game finally sure. comes out, because you've already played a bunch of it. So not to I mention, like, it, it, for the most part. It gets, it gets so weird when you talk about it, right? Because it's so hard to make that initial splash, right? I Am Bread just came out of Early Access, but it's like, how many millions of Let's Plays have you seen of I Am Bread? To the point of, like, now that it's it's out of Early Access into the general person, like, oh, I've already been playing that. I've seen somebody play it. They've made up their mind. I don't know how much you really drum up support in that sense. Well, it would be interesting to see what kind, if any, and we can check this on SteamCharts.com, what kind of boost it got from actually coming out. So... The answer is, it barely did, by the looks of it. See? So when was the release date of this game? I mean, this game actually hasn't done incredibly well. If you think, I mean, a lot of people thought, oh my god, this game's going to be super popular. No, its all-time peak players was 419, which is not mm -hmm. a lot. It's actually not that popular at all. 
And when did Iron Bread come out? Let's see. It came out on April the 9th. You can see there's a spike around yeah. there. They Because uh, basically no one's playing this game for months and months and months. This is one of the arguments people put out that say, oh, well, PewDiePie played it and put like millions of people's eyeballs on it. Yeah, but they're all like 10 years old and they don't have any money. That's, so, that's actually something that uh, I think has been... I've heard from a lot of devs, and I think it's something that you can see in the charts. You people are can. like, "Oh, yeah!" Like people are like, "Oh, well, PewDie's you, he will he will get you to get people to buy the game." It's like that's not no, that won't. does not show at all because even though he has a large audience, the audience is watching him, not the game. They don't right, give right. a yeah. crap about the game. They're there to see what crazy yeah. thing PewDie's going to do. And so again, that goes back to what we said before: send your game to everybody, not just. Big hitters because yeah, no don't don't descend to big hitting less players because you can uh, mind the audience they've got. Like here's an example, right? So Markiplier plays it to 2.6 million people on December the fourth. Yeah, and you go mm -hmm. to the Steam charts, think, wow, 2.7 million people. He must have caused a huge increase in people that bought it. Well, oh. no, he really didn't. And in fact, like there was a huge drop off after that. And all of the big let's players, none of them really even caused a a blip. You know, and they did. There was that boost on April the 9th. They got a boost in uh, concurrent players. They basically tripled their concurrence. But after two days, it had gone right back down to basically where it was before. So mm -hmm. I wonder how much of that is early access and whether early access actually does affect the sales figures. And I, I'd love to see how that spreads out over time. The problem is we'll never see it because Valve doesn't want that information released. But I'd love to see. A, a regular release game versus like a comparable indie game that was in early access and see like, oh, did they just spread the sales out over five months? Did it end up being exactly the same? Did it harm the launch in any way? That's all. Those are all really interesting questions that unfortunately we're probably never going to get the answer to unless we get a dev actually telling us. I mean, I feel like I, I also feel like I Am Bread kind of has the same problem that Hotful Boyfriend has. And Hotful Boyfriend wound up being like very popular. But like mm -hmm. they both, when you play them, you play like 30 minutes of them most of the time and go, all right, that's a nice gimmick. Yeah. And then you, most yeah. people walk away from it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, both games have a lot, a lot to Hotful. offer in the end game, right? Like there's so much going on by the end of the game that most people never even get involved with. We had... um. We had one of the main developers for I Am Bread on Friend Zone, and he was playing through the game and explaining like all of this stuff that goes into the game and how the levels as they, you know, as you get further and further and further, there are multiple ways to finish the level. And there's also like a story going on and like all these things. But most people play that like I did. Most people play that first level and are like, all right, this is a frustrating piece of shit. Like, yep. I'm not going to play this again. <laughs> right. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like Goat yeah. Simulator, Surge, or yeah, Goat Simulator, Surgeon Simulator, right? All these games you jump into and you get that taste. You're like, oh, I get it. And you put it down and you don't realize there's like 30,000 more goats to find and all this other stuff that's going to change in the MMO mode. You're like, oh, it was just goats. Yeah. Not well, only that, not not only just like there's, there's so much more um, in terms of like content, but like when there's a lot of love that actually goes into the game that you don't see within those first 30 minutes of the game right sure. and you feel like yeah. all right this is a gimmick game this is a game where you're trying to date birds that's funny i'm done <laughs> or this is a game where i play bread and i'm trying to toast myself for some reason okay cool i'm done with that as well but like for the people who really stick through it they're like no 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 there's like a story and it's really cool and it's trying to like tell you something and like all this stuff but you know a lot of times especially when a, a YouTuber like PewDiePie plays it, I think people just go, all right, that's a that's a good gimmick for I, one video. I had, a, I had a sensible <laughs> chuckle, and now I'm moving and on. And now I am done. Yeah. Yeah. I have no desire to buy this game. I will see you later. <laughs> yeah, because there's no implication that there's anything more to it, right? right. Especially right. like with a game like I Am Bread, you, you watch somebody play it or you play it yourself, and you go, cool, it's going to be more levels of this exact same thing, and I don't have the patience. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, yeah, that is interesting. Certainly, there's there's more information now available on Steam uh, Steam charts and a website called Steam Spy really than ever before, which is really interesting because they've they've tried to track actual ownership of games based on s spidering all the accounts, and there's some really surprising numbers in there. Not that we'll be able to view them because the chat will have probably crashed the website by now, but 
Like, for instance, there are 48, according to Steam Spy, there are 48 million people that downloaded Dota 2. There are 12 million people that own Counter Strike Global Offensive. I mean, that's a huge number. 27 million people for TF2. Gary's mod is 8.5 million. Skyrim is 8.2 million on PC. Civ 5 is 7.3 million. These are surprisingly good numbers, and a City Skylines apparently just passed 1 million, and according to Steam yeah. Spy, they're at 973,000. So that's pretty accurate. They're pretty close to the actual numbers. And it's really interesting to see what the top games actually are. And there's mm -hmm. some shocking ones in there that you wouldn't even expect. I didn't know that 5 million people had installed Heroes and Generals, for instance. That's a huge number. That right? is a huge number. Yeah, massive. Robocraft apparently has 6 million people that's installed it. It's like, wow, uh, really? I mean, I don't even know much about that game, honestly. It's like sleeper agent games. You don't even know. <laughs> oh, they sneak in. Yeah, that sneaky little the quiet, The quiet success stories that are all there with their communities under the radar. Yep. Freestyle Street Basketball, according to this, has 340,000 people that have installed it. Freestyle 2 Street Basketball. That's that Korean game that Krendor and Stripper were playing a bunch Krendor and Stripper played too damn much. Yeah. That game was fun, Simulator, 1.6 million. <laughs> wow. Crazy. They even apparently have Playtime Median. I'd love to see what the Playtime Median for Iron Bread is. I don't think they've tracked it. They only seem to like track the top 100, and Iron Bread is definitely not in there. But there's some <laughs> interesting median playtimes. Apparently the median playtime, I that's going to be hours, right? That can't be minutes. Uh, could, yeah, for Skyrim, so. yeah, for Skyrim is like 9 hours. Dota's like 22 hours, I think. I don't know, as far as I can tell anyway. Yeah, that's... Wow, Football Manager, 31 hours. Fuck me. That's that's a popular game. Surprisingly yeah, enough. just a bit. Yeah, just, just a little bit. European just markets bit. really, really love that one. Oh, my. Yeah. It's crazy that Payday 2 has roughly the same as, like, Playtime. It's only an hour behind Skyrim. It's the same at Playtime as Gary's Mod. It's oh, a like, horde mode game, like, and you've yeah. got to you've got to grind up to get progression. So yeah, I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people play a lot of Payday too. More players and playtime than Counter Strike Source. This is nuts. Yeah, well, I mean, CS, CS Source basically got replaced by CS Global Offensive, so I kind of that does make a degree of sense. But yeah, there's some surprisingly popular games on that list. Gotta love it. Why the hell mm. Reign of Kings is on there when that's not even close to it? Goat Simulator is number 65 on that list. Median playtime for that, according to that, is 29 minutes. Yeah. There's Goat Simulator for you. People right, like, Dodger yep, right I'm on done. the money. Yeah. Right on the money, Dodger. Half an hour and that's it. I know. Yep. I know. Oh, man. Dark Souls, medium playtime, one hour 55 before they threw their monitor through the window. Yeah, okay. That sounds <laughs> really? <right>. <laughs> that's <laughs> it? That yeah, really that's surprises the medium playtime. Yeah, the actual, uh, according to this, the actual, like, proper average playtime is about 7 hours 41 minutes for that game. I was going to say, that's more yeah. like what the I do. the <laughs> median is under 2 hours. So there you go. Anyone else been playing anything else this week before I talk about board games? Because we did play one of those. I have a, a couple weird sex games I can talk about. Yeah, sure. Go Holy ease. shit. Here we go again, every <laughs> bloody week. Um. So... Uh, you guys remember the game Succulent that Laura Kay talked about? The, well, that's barely a game, isn't it? It's literally watching a very handsome man sucking a you sausage, just, right? Yeah, you uh, a popsicle. A yes, popsicle, popsicle yes. Popsicle melts it, yeah. and... Uh -huh. Don't misrepresent this game. Okay, uh, you on the sausage. All too. right, so, sausage is but, the optional DLC. Okay, go on. Uh, so Robert Yang made another game that everybody sent to me after I played Succulent uh -huh. uh, called Stick Shift. It's where you're stick trying to shift. Okay. jack off the stick shift of your car. Can I read okay. the warning to you? It's really funny. <laughs> yes, by all means. Wait, what? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the warning says... Is this safe for work? Well, there is no human nudity in this game at all, but there are plenty of hot, naked gay cars, big, swollen, exposed gear sticks, and oozing exhaust pipes. Oh, God. <laughs> what? <laughs> at least he's honest about it. You gotta give him credit for that. I don't... Look, maybe. Maybe this isn't safe for work. I don't know. What are you into? <laughs> <laughs> can I... Sh I, I could probably show this on Twitch. Stick uh, shift, is it called? Stick shift. It's good. Wait, so oh, it's Cinnamon your... Co Toast Ken did a, a gameplay video of it three days did he? ago. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah. That doesn't really did. surprise me too much. So this is yeah. this you is just... a shocking amount of detail in this game. Like that's actually a good. <laughs> that's like, it's like a good looking car, right? Look at that. That's like that's better than uh, the standard PlayStation Four game. Look at that thing. 
Hey, now, come on. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> I gotta wait for this to show up on the damn stream. Uh, oh, I'm scared to search for this. It, there's, yes. a, there's another game that I played uh, since I don't wait, think that we really need I, to talk about I cannot fiction. explain unless, what is unless going on Unless you want here. to. Jesse, tell me your feelings about stick <laughs> What? I don't understand what... So what... <laughs> I don't understand what is happening right now. Make the car right happy. Make the car happy. It's a Jesse. gay car. It's it, they call Wait. it an auto erotic game. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like yeah, well okay, played, but... well played. Nah. So what is the objective here? It's a gay make car. The car ooze. Ooze. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Where, how do you make the car ooze? Where does, it doesn't make sense. You're jacking off the cars. It's the stick shift. Great. So what is the objective? You're trying to jack off your car. Yeah, make the car. Yeah, I think it sounds pretty obvious then. Yeah. No, that's stupid as shit. That's <laughs> stupid as shit. Fan Friday. Everybody that's push the stupidest it. Stupidest Fan Friday. No, for that's Jesse. stupid. I will never play this game. I will never promote a game that that's fucking stupid. That's Robert stupid. Yang, Robert Yang's official site says, What if sex in games was something we did instead of something we obtained? One way to do sex is to see sex everywhere. Sex here, sex there, sex behind yonder tree, and sex <laughs> through the tender caress that seduce gay cars everywhere. <laughs> Genius. What? I don't... Love it. This is why I drive an automatic. Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, what was oh, the... yeah. You played that one. What's the other one? one? The other one uh, is a game that Laura Case sent me. That is. She is a bad influence on you. I, tell you. I know. I love it. Ever since, ever since she was like, "Oh wait, are you actually gonna play all these weird games? Here, let me send you all of them." I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. "You are my queen, my lady." So, uh, she sent me a game called TITS. Okay. Yes. And it is. It's basically a, a choose your own adventure novel, but there yeah. are like pictures every now and then. Yeah. And yeah, it's uh. Oh. I mean, it's it's like it's like weird space porn game, basically. Mm -hmm. So you start off as your dad and you're like, <laughs> you're well, I don't like the way this is going. <laughs> yeah. You start off as your dad and you're basically uh, at the beginning, you have to choose who you want to have a baby with. So it's like, here are all of these different weird space races. Who do you want to have a baby with that you choose? And then you go to the doctor and the doctor's like, hey, since we're in space and it's the future, we can basically make your baby whatever you want. So here are all sorts of choices. And they start off really normal, like, what hair color do you want? What about eye color? Do you want her or him? It doesn't, you get to choose gender too. Do, do you want them to be real muscular? Do you want them to be kind of frail? Or what, what do you want? And then it gets into super weird stuff. Like how, how lubricated do you want their vagina to be? Just asking, just throwing it out there. And I'm like, this is so weird. And it just like gets weirder and weirder and weirder. And then it's like, and now you are that baby. Go off into the world and, and fight space aliens. But like, when you fight the space aliens, <laughs> TV space is my favorite thing in the world right now. Wow. When, you fight, when you fight the space aliens, you get to choose whether you have to determine whether nope. it's more effective nope. to fight them nope. normally nope. or Don't to seduce them. No, 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 no. This is this is literally this is a four chan game. This is a four chan game <laughs> that you have discovered. There are about twelve million of these that exist. In all different forms, you can find these all over the place. It's like you just discovered the internet. No wonder you're in MMOs. You just—it's 2005 for you. You're just getting on the internet. You're just <laughs> no, discovering I just, things. It's not that I'm just discovering them. No, nope. it's that I still nope. find them entertaining. It's nope. that I'm not jaded yet. I'm still loving it. <laughs> still loving the weird shit the internet gives me. Dodger, yes, the big I question I think I have, and the chat has, is just uh, how lubricated of a vagina did you pick? Oh, what I are the chose, choices exactly? Chose, is it on a numerical uh, scale? Is it by milliliters? So fluid ounces. I'm trying to remember. I think it was like, I think the doctor was like, we can choose to either make the vagina super lubricated or we can choose uh -huh. for it to be super stretchy, but you can't have both. And I was like, I'll go with lubrication, please. And yeah. then like... <laughs> Yeah, that was the right pick. You did the right thing. <laughs> Thank you. The special lockable option is teeth. Oh my gosh, there were there were so many like DLC super weird choices <laughs> that I can't even. Never the I realms would do it. They're selling everything fucking else right now. 
So yeah. So that was uh, that was a thing that I played. You can thank Laura Kay for that as well, as per oh, usual, as per usual Laura. on this podcast. My my Laura Kay recommendation of the week. Uh, oh, my. Yeah, that's a game called Tits. Stop right there, criminal scum. Space stuff. And other than that, I've been still going hard on Final Fantasy. Oh, actually, I also played um, I played a game that's in alpha. There's a Kickstarter for it right now. It's called Charmixy. Okay. Um, Charmixie Witch Academy, and it's a little bit uh, uh, Street Fighter Puzzle Fighter ish. It's a little bit Doctor Mario, where you play um, different students in the Witch Academy, and you and you get blocks that have two tones, and you have to match them all up, right? And, and then, then you uh, get a wet vagina if you do it all. And then you can choose how how lubricated you want your vagina to be. But Just that's a big that's old really sloppy vag. Really, Just really a JJ. Magic so of JJ. Before that, before the you only choose games your I play, please inside stop. of Charm Mixie, you get to uh, choose different abilities that you want to have. So, like, the longer you play, you unlock different abilities that you can utilize in the game, like like a ninja star, like just takes out everything that's in one row, or like one of them I think is called uh, the diamond, and it just like destroys one block, whatever one block you want. Um, and it's super, super alpha. So some of them seem very similar and I'm assuming they're going to be a bit more diverse over time, but, uh, yeah, it's really, really cute. I like the art style a lot. And when you watch their trailer, you can tell that there's way more to the game than just the, 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 the like puzzle aspect of it, but that's the aspect that they're letting you play right now in the alpha version. So yeah, check that out. It's real cute. And I, I love puzzly games like that. So, all right, fair enough. I played a board game this week. Uh, my parents were over, and getting my dad to play any kind of game is very difficult. He just doesn't game in general, so it's a bit strange. But eventually, I can convince him to play board games sometimes. He will insist on Monopoly, and I'll tell him that that's the worst game in history and he shouldn't play it. So I'll give him an alternative. Last time we tried Dominion. Worked out pretty well. Similar principle to Monopoly. Make a lot of money. Own everybody else. Only without all of the terrible game mechanics. So we're like, okay... And then the next game we went for is called Sheriff of Nottingham. And this is a game about lying and smuggling and bribing people. And it comes with five little colored bags. And in these bags, you smuggle, you put cards into the bags and you attempt to smuggle them into Nottingham. But everyone gets a turn playing the sheriff. And the sheriff decides whether or not he will open the bag and inspect your goods or whether or not he will let you pass. And you have to lie about what's in the bag. Now, of course, if you successfully lie and get it through, that's great. You can sneak in things like contraband, but you're also trying to sneak in legal goods as well. If you are telling the truth and he opens the bag, he has to pay you a penalty. But if he's lying, he confiscates the goods that you didn't declare and fines you, basically. Which okay. is... Uh-huh. Yeah, which is unpleasant. So the whole game becomes trying to figure out exactly how people are playing and why. Like, we discovered that my son never lies... So we started to get an idea of what he was doing. He would, and that he was also trying to collect as many apples as possible. So when he says, I have four apples, best believe he has four motherfucking apples and just let him through. And <laughs> my, my dad was just sneaking in mead and pepper and crossbows and all sorts of bloody things <laughs> in the bag, just lying his ass off. But he would inspect everybody regardless of what they did. So it was completely pointless to try and sneak in contraband because you know he's going to open the bag and he's probably not going to take your bribe. But there's like a phase where you negotiate with the sheriff. It's like, well, how about I give you like six gold and you don't open that bag? Or how about I give you eight gold and you open her bag instead? Or something like that. So you can you can play it down that way. Interesting. Yeah. It's it's pretty good, actually. We had a lot of fun with it. The metagame kind of developed. How yeah, I was gonna say, how long did it take for everybody to get into it where those kind of relationships were developing? It took probably a couple of turns. You have everyone gets two goes at being the sheriff and then the game ends, and then you tot up the score. And the scoring is done via, like, how many of each. If you have the most apples, you become the king of apples, and you get a a boost for that. You become the king of chickens, and so on and so forth. But then you have to count the contraband, which was all face down as well, that you snuck in. And suddenly you find at the end that someone actually snuck in, like, 50 crossbows and suddenly won the game. So, But it took about, like, two turns, I'd say, of of people playing the sheriff to really get it. To figure Mm -hmm. out, oh, yeah, so... I can try and be honest, but if I can't get enough... uh, You can only declare one good that's inside the bag that's the trick so you're trying to collect like sets if i can get like five uh, apples and i could put five apples in the bag that's great because i'll say i'll declare five apples 
And if he looks in my bag, he has to pay me a penalty. And if he doesn't look in my bag, yeah. I get five apples through. So it's a win-win. But being able to get the right number of cards to actually collect that is difficult. So you often have to lie. It's like, well, I got four chickens when I really have three chickens and an apple, you know. So, but you can only declare the three chickens. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting game, actually. We had a lot of fun with it. It's uh, well worth a shot. If you, look, if you want a social board game and you're, you're with a group that is good with lying and isn't going to get salty because someone lied to them in the context of the game, then it's a lot of fun. I can imagine some groups probably just won't work for them. The goody two-shoes. Your yes. church groups. The Absolutely. people who won't lie. God yes. damn people, it, Father. People are, if you won't lie and bribe and, uh, and try and manipulate everybody, then it's, it's boring as hell. <laughs> but if you have a group of people that are willing to lie to each other and try and trick each other, it's really interesting. It's all mind games. So we What I always it. love, uh, when I was younger and I was very, like... I always felt bad about, you know, playing mm. that role in a game. Yeah. There was always that turning point where somebody in the group had been playing that way the whole time and everybody else wasn't. And then you're just like, you know what? Fuck it. And then <laughs> everybody starts doing that. Like everybody just suddenly switches, like <laughs> just becomes an asshole in the game. And it's like, uh oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's good to do that. Like it, teaching a group, especially a group that's not very experienced with board games, that the point of a game is to like to screw people over is often quite difficult. But once you get them into that mindset and once they let go of the kind of inhibition, it's a lot of fun. It's like it's the same with Battlestar Galactica and all those other games that involve lying. You've just you've got to accept that it's part of the game mechanics and that it's not personal and that you're supposed to screw people over. It's like I hear stories of people getting losing friends over games like Munchkin. I'm like, how? Oh, yeah. How do you lose friends over Munchkin? It's literally a game about fucking everybody else over. But people get genuinely mad when you do it. It's like, but that's the point of the game. It's like, but I yeah. just want to play nice. No, then you're playing the wrong game. This is not a game about playing nice. This is a game about being an absolute scumbag. You yeah. can cheat. You can legally cheat in that game if you get away with it. If nobody notices you, it's literally in the rule book. It says you can cheat. You're allowed to. That is not a game about being nice. So don't get mad when people aren't nice. Come on. Yeah, I love games like that where you have to pay attention to what everybody else is doing yes. because there's always a possibility that like, sure, something's written in the rules, but if you don't catch them not doing it, then they're going to yeah. get away with it. They're like... get away with it, yeah. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about some of the games that are either out or coming out. We're going to be looking at the news. There's actually quite a lot of interesting news this week and then all sorts of things that have come out. So we're going to be talking about that and then we'll wrap up the show with the releases and the usual plugging. In the meantime, we'd like to have a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. We have a brand new ad for you. I know people get very excited when we do our custom Squarespace ads for some reason. Hopefully this one will be enjoyable for you. Please go and support our sponsor over at squarespace.com slash co-optional. We'll be right back after the break with yet more co-optional podcasts. Do not go anywhere, please. Ah, Crendor, you seem busy. Yeah, I'm updating the podcast website. Wait, we, we have a website? Yeah, I put one together with Squarespace. But you're a guest host. You're not even on the show all the time. That's not what our website says. Wait, uh, what the hell is this? The Crend Optional Podcast. According to this, you've not only hosted every episode, but you've also co-hosted every episode. Well, yeah, people kept telling me I was on the show all the time, so I just took their word at face value. One, people lie on the internet all the time. Two, you replaced my face with yours. It's not even well photoshopped. I don't even wear that hat. Look, it's like you said, you can't be anything without a website. It's like being a country without a flag. So I went to squarespace.com slash co-optional and got 10% off my first order and built this site. There's a list of topics here. Crendor's trip to Ikea. Crendor buys coffee. Crendor drinks coffee. Crendor tries to eat coffee. None of these are relevant to video games. Well, we do only occasionally talk about video games. It says here this entire show is a three-year-long documentary about the life of an American hero. What can I say? Squarespace inspired me to take some creative license. You replaced Dodger's face too? Yeah, I think it's an improvement. I'm gonna have this taken down right now. Good luck, Squarespace has rock solid uptime and fantasy security. You'd need an army to get rid of it. That can be arranged. Squarespace, create a website with no prior experience or factual podcast hosting required. For as little as $8 a month, you can even start a free trial without a credit card. 
business, blogs, portfolios, stores, elaborate delusional lies. With intuitive and powerful functionality, the only limit is your capacity for ideas. Delusional ideas. Sign up today at squarespace.com slash cooptional. Squarespace. Build it beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Co-Optional Podcast. Greg, good lord. It, you managed to summon Jesse. That was impressive. He was gone until five yeah. seconds before. I, that's how, this is the move to bring him back. Yeah. It does the job, yeah. apparently. Congratulations. Yeah. We need to bring you back more often because Jesse's now, never just, here on time. Yeah, exactly. I've, you remember it. You call me anytime. I'll be right here to bring Can you do him that back, again? Please. I want the internet. I want everyone on the internet to see the... How, how do you do that? There we go. It's the summoning right. ritual, right. of course. You use all the neck muscles, all the tendons that, and stuff in your neck. Keep that, yeah. keep that in mind, ladies. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> Bloody Mary. Do right. that in front of your mirror, and I'll appear behind <laughs> you. Just, just do this in front of your mirror, and then Jesse will appear. What I'll appear behind you. Nothing scary about that. No, nothing terrifying about that whatsoever. I'm in your house now. Oh, It'll be great. Jesus It'll be great. Christ. All right. So, I, the biggest news of the week: Guitar Hero is coming mm -hmm. back. It's yeah, not it's backwards reboot. compatible. It's a reboot, ladies yes, and gentlemen. Yes, they rebooted the Plastic Instrument series, and it's not backwards compatible. Big fucking surprise. So all hey, uh, everything big, you well, know about Guitar Hero has changed. Everything, absolutely, yeah, except for nothing the whatsoever. Well, they're 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 changing like the button layout. They're changing the way that it shows you everything. Like they're changing a lot about it. But if they're planning to try and compete with Rockstar. Or rock, rock, band. Band. rock Band? Yeah, band. when Rock Band is like, no, you can still use your old stuff, it's cool. <laughs> like, it's just, I don't think that it's We're gonna top. work. Yes, so apparently it's the developer of DJ Hero, which was good. Uh, DJ Hero was a good game, it was fun, but again, a lot of people didn't want to buy the giant plastic fucking turntable in order to play it, but it was a pretty fun uh, game nonetheless. I like the way they, they did a bunch of mashups between two different kinds of songs, that was cool. Yeah. And along comes the uh, what they're calling Guitar Hero Live, that is a dog. Sorry, Portillo's okay. barking at something out there, so I had to bring Porty in. Say hi to everybody for me. Was that sent to you by a games publisher as some sort of bribe towards the yes, interview? Yes, if it was. He, he was swag from Nintendogs. Yeah. Oh, okay, fair <laughs> enough. I was going to say, if they did, they did a good job there. I would give that game at least a nine. Absolutely. Yeah. Give it a damn nine, or the dog will look really sad at you. Just as sad as you can imagine. Big puppy Body dog Body training eyes. can go easy, or it can go really difficult. Let's see how <laughs> the dog's this name goes. is 10 out of 10. <laughs> 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 Lovely. Yeah, so they're calling Guitar Hero Live, and I assume the reason they're doing that is because they decided to remove all the interesting visuals whatsoever and replace it with real people. Mm -hmm. Sega CD lives. Isn't that a great idea, guys? Real people. Is it going? Are they? Is is there also legal issues with getting the recorded tracks versus the live versions? Is it money as well? Probably. I don't have a bloody clue, frankly. Yeah, I don't know. That's a, that's because if it's live, thing. are they gonna? Is it? Are they actually gonna have like the live versions of songs, or is it just gonna be like the same songs, but I think with a live I, audience? I think it's literally like cover bands. Is it? No, I think is so. It? That Hold would be on. terrible if it was, because they got out. most. That sounds terrible. Yeah, because I was gonna say they got most of the original master tracks for a lot of their other stuff. If it's actually cover bands, that would be terrible. I'm wondering where the footage comes from, because I'm, I'm looking through this and oh, I'm they seeing. It. But when did like, they do it? Was it at actual gigs that they did? No, this? no, no, no. Because like that's the whole thing. We have a let's play up, and I I didn't get to go play it when they did. So they went and played it, and they put up the let's play, and I got to watch it with everybody else. Yeah. And no, it's like it's actors in the crowd. Because if you're doing yeah. poorly, they start getting all like... They boo you. It's, fir yeah. Wait, it's first what? person. It, Wait, yeah. Jesse, what? it's insane. It's you literally start first person. Yeah. yeah, you start backstage and you're like looking at your hands. You're fiddling with a pick. Then you go what? out. Into, you go out into different arenas, different places. There's like all these... It's all... It's real video. People shot in first person to take you out there to then perform. And so, yeah, if you're doing great, the audience is into it. They're pointing at you. They're screaming. They're having a great time. They're and your bandmates. With you. Your bandmates exactly. are like, yeah, man. But if you start sucking, your bandmates are like... Oh. Yeah, they do. It's totally like Back to the Future, where they're all like looking at you all off the kilter, and like they'll walk over to you and ask if you're okay, and then you have to look back, and the crowd's booing you. It's re weird, weird, weird. Well, it's like Super Night Trap all over again. Oh, yeah, ex my exactly. God. That's terrifying. That's a social trap. anxiety simulator. I don't want that. That's <laughs> yeah, horribly as intimidating. As as if it wasn't bad enough playing these games last time around with all your friends in the room being like, dude, you can't do, you can't play guitar on medium. Now you get to see thousands of fans looking all right. at you. I'm, like, I'm nicking your footage to put on the screen right now. So you've Please got do. two, two, there you go. two of the kind of funny games. games guys in the corner. Yeah. And this is yeah. what it now looks like. 
that's also the pause menu. Is he going to turn the difficulty <laughs> down? Am I going to laugh at him? Yeah. Oh, he's turning no, it no, up. That, turning it up. Hey, there that's we go. The new, that's one of the big things they're promoting in this is that you can change the difficulty on the on fly. On the fly. That's yeah, neat. So I'll give him that. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's the fake the fake crowd, which is... Oh, this is... Oh, I know. So I loved Guitar Hero. And one of the reasons I really liked it was because they went over the top with really colorful, interesting visuals. Sure. This is the antithesis of that. It's so drab. At least in my eyes. It's the thing about it for me as somebody who didn't get to play it, right? Is I, I watched this let's play and I was like, oh, like they're doing something different, which is refreshing. I was afraid it was just gonna be more guitar hero, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna go up and rock band's gonna go back out too, like let's have them be at least separated. I watched it, I thought it was cool watching the crowd react, but like is it gonna be cool on my twelfth play of a song or whatever? Like, yeah, I, I, it's gonna be. Re it's because it's the same stuff, isn't it? There's the much less you can do with this. As I mean, Jesse was making the com a comment that it was night trap with a guitar. It's like, right. well, yeah, because you're seeing the same FMV over and over again. Like, I just saw the uh, in your footage, the the singer obviously getting visually mad at you for missing all the stuff, and the drummer's yeah. like, "What the fuck?" I mean, how often are you gonna see that, and how effective is it gonna be? I can't imagine it's gonna be that good. Well, what Tim had said, he's one of the guys in the video who went and saw it. He said that they were t saying that it's not every song has this interaction. Like, these, these are going to be certain songs that have these, like, fully, like, whatever, scripted things where you go out and have the audience able to react to you. It mm -hmm. won't always be like that. But I don't know if the other side of it, then, is going to be the cartoony, bright gra graphics we remember. And that would be a weird right. clash, wouldn't it, if they did that? Where half yeah. the yeah, songs like are that style? Yeah, like some were one way and some aren't. That's an aesthetic like, at least stick to one aesthetic. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, mean, I, do, I love I love this this band. I've been watching this video. The, your bandmates are the most eclectic group of hipsters I've ever seen. You have like sassy girl in the back who's giving you the eye, like, "What are you doing?" And then you got like cool Asian dude with suspenders rocking out. It's great. Lead singer Flair Man. I don't know what the hell you have. Why has a flair? Who knows? I love it. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> According to the IGN article, it's not cover bands. They okay. some artists already confirmed include the Killers, Fall Out Boy, My Chemical Romance, Green sure. Day, blah blah blah. Yeah, the bass game is also band ninety pounds. In their voices. By the way, yeah, exactly. I think I guess it's just yeah. You're just you have the dumb band around you, and it's still Billy Joel, Billy <laughs> yeah. Joel Armstrong, or Billy Joel if they have Billy yeah. Joel singing. <laughs> I love Billy Joel. You're just chilling out next to his piano with your guitar, waiting for something. <laughs> just like, mm, <laughs> yep. Yeah, you're if nailing I, it, Billy. Was this the if, time to reboot Guitar Hero? I have to ask. Have we have we waited long enough to waste yet more money on stupid plastic instruments that will inevitably find themselves in our garage? Or do we... I think uh, there's uh, been a pretty big Amiibos? bite from that. Uh, I hadn't waited Amiibos? long enough. Amiibos? I hadn't waited long enough. I wanted there to be more time. I wanted this to be a big event when one of them came back, and I didn't I definitely did not want them both to come back. They're both the coming back for this Christmas, aren't they? It's I gonna mean, be a fucking Christmas battle again. Yeah. I mean, they kind of had to, right? The second that one was like, we're coming back, the other one was like, oh, shit. 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 Yeah. God like, damn it. They kind of had to. Well, the to. interesting thing now is like, and it's, you know, first first blush for sure, but for Guitar Hero, right, it's them scaling back, like, because they had gone the whole, we're gonna be rock they, bands They did the band right? thing, yeah. Yeah, and now they're just like, you know what? No, fuck that. Guitar. We're back to just being a guitar. We're three buttons with, or you know, three buttons with two ups and downs, which is interesting. Like, no more of that five. Get to, get your pinky down to the orange key to try. I to love do it. doing Thank that. Thank God, because my hands are too small for that shit. <laughs> yeah. I could not play guitar. Hero. I won two Guitar Hero tournaments in my day. Real ones with actual prizes. You got five. <laughs> I thought you were gonna five say real buttons. ones with actual guitars, and I was gonna laugh. <laughs> but no, no, I can't play guitar. No. <laughs> But it's like, come on, five buttons, you know, you slide, you slide, that's the point. Or you just reach your pinky over, it's easy, it's easy, you just slide. But it's, but now you're going to have like these weird, these little claw hands going and you're going to be like, oh, look, man, I, I'm really playing. I'm getting the frets, I'm getting chords here. I'm getting I'm arthritis, it. go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not so sure about this. I don't know if I want to get back into Guitar Hero again. And I don't, I really don't like the live stuff. I really don't want to be staring at creepy band disapproving real people. It really does give judged. me that FMV game vibe where they're staring yeah, directly no. at your faceless form. That's terrifying to me. I love that shit. I think that's great. Someone it's was saying, oh. creepy and weird and fun. What would it it's... be like an Oculus Rift? The answer is my worst nightmare. Terrifying. <laughs> I did not buy a game to be judged by your fucking actor band. Thank you very much. Absolutely not. Oh, God. Uh, all right. Well, 
that's that. It's called Guitar Hero Alive, and apparently they're aiming for it to come out this Christmas. It's got Fallout Boy in it. Yay. In fact, the soundtrack actually looks <laughs> quite terrible. It's like, My Chemical Romance, The Black Keys, Green Day. Uh, all right. Oh, if, I, I mean, if I was 13, maybe. Uh, yeah. They got the Rolling Stones in there. I'll give them that. But fuck, man. Guitar Hero 2 soundtrack, best soundtrack. Absolutely it is fantastic. Best. It is you the know, best. So you know. good. Last song, Bark at the Moon. Yes, absolutely. Such a fun song to play. I'm not so keen on this one, though. All right, let's well, move on. The, you got to get those freeze pop songs in there. Yeah. There's always one. No, There's always oh at least God. one. No. Well, that, well that's are. Rock Band's t- t- turf now. Rock Band for sure will have freeze pop in it, guarantee. Oh, definitely. I, <laughs> at PAX. They were at the PAX East this year, yeah? I, apparently, everyone was like, at the concert, I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> it was amazing. They, there's video. Uh, uh, I'll dodge it off to send you the video of them being like, I'm singing a song. I'm singing a song. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> right. I love Freeze Pop. I love them. Uh, all right, let's move on. So Star- uh, apparently Star Wars Battlefront is supposedly going to have some exclusivity in its early access This came from the Aaron Greenberg of the Xbox marketing team. They claimed, very ready and play it first on Xbox One through EA Access, which is, of course, the program, the subscription service, which is exclusive to Xbox One. You can't get it on anything else. And they're saying, yeah, you'll probably be able to play Star Wars Battlefront quicker using that. You'll be able to play it first on Xbox One rather than on PlayStation 4 rather than on PC, which I'm sure everyone's super happy about, right? Yeah. Right? But Xbox um, One owners are. Everyone loves console exclusivity, right? Sure. Right? Especially when it's completely and totally meaningless, right? Look, God. I mean, they're trying to get people to use their consoles, man. Whatever they got to do. It, that, that's, it seems like they've really got, in this generation, it's really like whatever we have to do. Like, if we have to get a service exclusive, we're going to get it. These are multi-platform mm-hmm. games. That's what bothers me the most. I, I, but there was an announcement, I believe, yesterday about the new Destiny expansion, how PlayStation 4 owners, again, get more content than the Xbox One guys. I'm like, how the fuck is that reasonable? Honestly. Hey, you I don't like yeah, Destiny. Yeah, yeah. Gabe Newell could have driven his dump truck full of money up to somebody and said, here's what you do, but he did it. Shoot how your sheet did. And that's how it makes sense. <laughs> it's bollocks is what it is. I mean, if they, did, if they did the exclusivity thing with Steam, I'd be just as unhappy with it. I hate sure, third-party sure. exclusivity stuff. It's so obviously artificial i don't if you want to buy a studio and make an exclusive showpiece game for your console you go right ahead you paid for all that stuff fine i'm still annoyed like i'd like to play bloodborne on pc because i like 60 frames per second games can't get that on any console i mean fuck it drops down like 19 have they fixed the loading screen issue yet probably not <laughs> I'd, lo- I'd love to play that without a minute's respawn time, but not, not I understand. I, last. <laughs> I understand that's an exclusive game that was paid for. Okay, but these are multi-platform releases, and they're slicing bits off to apportion it out to whoever. I mean, they're pu- then it's not a reward for brand loyalty. It's punishing people that didn't buy your machine. It's like, well, I picked a PS4. Well, fuck you. Like, I mean, but, it's it's them fighting over scraps. Yeah, right it is. Now it really the console is. generation, right? Yeah. The, 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 as you know, the ubiquity that exists between these two machines, there have to be these little clauses where Sony sits down with Activision and is like, "Here is all the money in the world. Give us whatever you can." They're like, uh, "You want a, you want an exclusive gun?" And they're like, "Yeah, yeah, give us that for sure." And yeah. now EA Access is like, Microsoft comes knocking. Hey, let's get Battlefield exclusive or Battlefront exclusive. You can't, but we can give you a we week can give you early access. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah great. Give it to we'll me. We'll take great. whatever we'll we take get. It. We'll take it. We'll take it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's Green about, it's about differentiating. About today. As you yeah, said, tweet about two it, machines. Put hashtag Xbox first. Oh yeah, and pe- I, what annoys me most is like <laughs> Xbox users just fucking celebrating that stuff. Hashtag. It's like, yeah, you'll be celebrating that until Sony pulls the same shit, and then you'll be out complaining. Like nobody yeah, wins yeah. in the console wars. Nobody. Except people who own all the consoles. And even then, it's a pain in the ass. You know, you'd probably rather have it on PC anyway. But outside of that, it's just it's it's just so, so horribly silly. And I am always consistently surprised when I see people just lauding it from the consumer standpoint. Because it's like, you lose. You're not mm-hmm. winning anything. You literally, you, you flicked a coin, you picked one console, you're going to get screwed over on 50% of the content, and you're going to get the other 50%. That yep. you lose either way. Don't celebrate this behavior. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. 
The ones, I mean, like, this is always annoying, but the one that got me last generation, I'm sure it'll get me coming up in June, is all the Batman retail pre-order exclusives. Oh, God. Where it's like, oh, look at this awesome Batman Beyond skin, but you got to get it at GameSpot. Well, you want the Dark Knight Returns? That's at Best Buy. Go to Target. Yeah. (laughs) It's like like when they have all these skins and it's literally impossible to get them all because you'd have to buy all four versions from these different retailers. I had a friend at work, Destin Legary, who went on eBay and bought them all. And I'm like, you are insane. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, this is what it's come to. This is video games now. Yes. Oh, it's just... It is literally slicing off little pieces of it to see what happens. Speaking of slicing off little pieces, Mortal Kombat uh. 10. So, Jeff Gersman was a little bit surprised <laughs> to learn that you can now pay for... You can pay for these tokens, which allow you to do easy fatalities. You can buy 30 easy fatalities for four ninety nine on PlayStation 4. Five That's easy a good fatalities. Deal. Well, I mean, five easy fatalities is only a buck. So you are saving. You are saving. You are getting five Smart. more easy fatalities for free. What a wait, wait, what wait, a easy fatality can we, can you Yeah, where? can we explain what easy fatality okay, is? So exactly? an easy right. So an easy fatality is basically you press two buttons and perform a fatality. Versus oh, rather than needing to memorize like a, yes. a combo. Yes, a exactly. Gotcha. Now these easy fatality tokens are also available in the crypt. I went into the crypt when I, I did one of the things that actually worked. I went into the crypt earlier. <laughs> And the third thing I unlocked was a token for an easy fatality. And the thing is, these tokens get spent. (laughs) They get fucking spent. They disappear after you've used them. So you've got like, hey, I could pull off an easy fatality. And yet they're now selling them. But I mean, it was, I think it was, uh, for me anyway, it was a very much a, haha, this is what games have come to. This is ridiculously dumb. Rather than, I am outraged about this. Because let's be frank, fatalities don't do anything. They have no purpose. You can pull off the same fatality anyway. You're probably going to get bored of it after seeing it five times in the first place. So if if someone is a schmuck enough to buy 30 easy fatalities, I would love to see the stats on who buys this stuff. It's the same with uh, Assassin's Creed Unity. Who buys the in-game currency for that? Or for Dead Space? Who bought that? How many people actually put money in to do that? I would love to know. You know what I kind of hope happened? Was that there were people being like, Hey, can you make it so that it's easier to do fatalities in Mortal Kombat? Because I can't always remember the fatalities. And they were like, Mm -hmm. sure, we'll make it easier. But for your laziness, you have to pay us. (laughs) Now, (laughs) here is the issue. So this all sounds like, meh, who cares? But according to, and bear in mind, these are all like posts on Reddit and things like that. So they might not necessarily not be accurate, but... They snuck this in after the game came out. So apparently all the guys doing the review stuff, it's the same as what Unity did. Unity broke their microtransaction system for reviewers so they couldn't look at it and then put it in when the game came out. They did the same yeah. thing with Mortal Kombat X. Apparently it wasn't available before the game came out, so no one knew this was happening. But supposedly there was an update for the game which decreased the number of coins that you get. Now, by decreasing the number of coins that you get on boss fights, it means that it takes much longer to open the crypts. So it takes longer to get those tokens. Now, I'm still thinking to myself, is that really enough to encourage people to actually buy fucking fatality tokens? But simultaneously, isn't this a prime example of what we've been afraid of in the first place, that putting microtransactions into those games encourages companies to manipulate the in-game economy? to decrease Absolutely. the token drop right. Yeah. I mean, this is a smoking gun for that, right? Yeah, we were we were talking about this not too long ago with um the Resident Evil episodes, yeah. right? Yeah, we were, yeah. Just like how the second that you say to yourself, "Oh, yeah, this is fine," it causes you to start shifting things ever so slightly within the rest of the game. Yeah. And then suddenly the the game is different even if it's like in a very small way. It's it's different in order to encourage you toward paying money rather than just letting the game be what the game is supposed to be. Yeah. That that's the real problem with it. If that ever actually happens. It's it's definitely suspicious. There's no doubt about that. I don't see concrete proof that this is happening yet. Because obviously we've only just got our hands on the game and it's going to take probably a little longer for reviewers to have a look at it and really realize what's going on. But of course, this comes on the back of the game locking Goro behind a pre-order paywall. 
And also well, putting... You, you, come on, sorry. Come on, just pre-order the game. Just pre-order the game. It's that simple. Get Sounds Goro. good. Yeah. Um, oh, on. If, if only the game actually worked it, on launch. On. Funny it worked on launch. <laughs> oh, wait, it fucking doesn't. So anyone that pre-ordered it on PC has a chance of getting shafted, which is funny. And apparently you can also pay... Maybe you should have made the right choice about where to play it then. That's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, if I was blind, then I'd play it on a lower resolution console. But as it turns out, I got this nice shiny new pair of glasses. So, you know, I can see now. I was blind and now I see. Wonderful mm -hmm. 4K resolutions. Who wants... Like, that's too many Ks. Who wants that many resolutions? <laughs> the human eye could only that. see 1Ks, right? Uh, there, <laughs> according to Mortal Kombat, there are never enough fast. Ks. <laughs> it's scary. It's scary. There's too many frames. <laughs> but they actually put an unlock code in as well. You could pay 20 bucks to unlock the entire crypt. Instead of just... Bear in mind, the crypt has... I don't think the there's game. any, there's no characters in the crypt. If it's anything, it's like alternate fatalities, alternate costumes, and like concept art and shit. If it's anything like MK9. Costumes, but shit. you can pay six, you can pay 20 bucks to unlock the whole crypt. If you want. Which again, comes back to the same problem that we're seeing. The token drop rate has decreased. The coin drop rate has decreased. Which means they're actually trying to, you know, fucking get people to pay that money. Right. Oh. And Boon! <laughs> I, I can't, if Ed Boon had anything to do with this, I'm going to throw him in a fire and then shout, Toasty! But I very much <laughs> doubt it was Ed Boon. This is probably the publisher putting the shit in, let's be honest. Oh, man. Just, pfft, it's filthy. It's the kind of way that you piss consumers off to the point where they don't want to buy your games on launch anymore. Like, not only are they coming out broken, but you're also ladening them with microtransactions to the point where people are just sick and tired of being nickel and dimed and having it shoved in their face. Like, Goro is sitting right there in my character select, grayed out, fucking taunting me for not gambling 60 bucks on a pre-order for a game that didn't work on launch. Right. Mm -hmm. So here's the question, though. When is the breaking point coming for that? I feel like we've been mm. saying that, first off, this entire console generation since it started. Absolutely. That vote with your wallet, don't pre-order games, they're yep. going to be broken, and it's not stopping yeah. anyone from going out and buying games. I don't understand no. what it takes for everybody to be like, wait a second, let's wake up. Yeah, it really hasn't, because uh, the I think it was the premium edition was third on the Steam charts, and GTA V, over a week before release, has been number one for the whole week. Now, mm -hmm. for the most part, people were fine with GTA V, because like I said, the port is good. Except for that Rockstar social club thing, which is fucking everybody over. The port is good. But I, I, I don't know when it is. I mean, after last year with Ubisoft, I mean, right. when we had Unity was broken everywhere... Everywhere, on every machine, it was fucked in some way or the other. Far Cry 4 was broken in many ways, although not quite as bad as Assassin's Creed was. The crew was fucked on launch. Yep. How many more Drive games? Club. Drive Club, yeah. Um, fucking Halo Master Chief Collection is still not working properly after months, and it's lost I mean, most of its player base. I think it's, it's, a, it's that feeling of not wanting to be left behind. Oh, right? very much so. This is especially like, true when you got uh, progression systems in games. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, yeah, you want to be part not, of the not only that, but also yeah, you you want to know that if like your friend is playing it and having a good time, that you're also playing it and having a good time, and like you don't want to feel that jealousy of like you get to play it, but I don't get to play it because I voted with my wallet and I didn't buy it, right? Like, I think people have that that feeling of like, well, I'm just one guy. And I, I want I want to have the game right when it comes out so that I can enjoy it and so that, you know, I'm not I'm not being left behind, whether in terms of friendships or in terms of like actual game content. That's so. what that's what Destiny was like for a lot of people, wasn't it? You bought it because your friends were buying it and you were all playing it and then you all basically Fucking quit together. Destiny. <laughs> you that's why I bought together. it. That's why I bought it. I bought it for my asshole friends, all 12 of those sons of bitches who were like, come play Destiny with us. And then by the time I hit 20, they were all like, well, we're done with it. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I, 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 I wonder when, when is the breaking point? I don't know. When is the damn breaking point? I couldn't tell you. I keep, I, it's, I keep, keep going. Go, Greg. Do it. Say words. Ah, at this point, I mean, I feel like it's... The breaking point didn't happen the way I thought it was. Now it's just assumed everything's going to be broken. Because we talk about all these AAA games, right? But then it happens... Like, Helldivers on PlayStation 4 came out and was totally fucked. Because of its online interface and how... And it's just like... now people are Tetris like, oh, well. came out on PlayStation 4 and was you fucked. Can't, you still can't play Tetris with a full friends list. And everyone's like, well, that's just 2015 video, video games. Video games. Like, Wait, we can't even is. make Tetris work. 
and we keep getting fucked over. So are we? How do we stop it? How do we fix it? I think we buy a Wii U, don't we? I think uh, that, that's you just play on Wii U because apparently everything works on launch on Wii U. I, yeah, those first party Nintendo games come out singing. Yeah, every six months we get a new game. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh and yet they God. don't want us talking about it. Oh, yeah, they've got their own yeah. problems. The like, we'd love to promote internet. you, but no, 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 no. Nintendo Japan hates hates YouTube, and you've got to give them half your money if you want to even talk about their game. Ah. I no. kept wondering <laughs> if, in in terms of uh, of that feeling of, like, I need to have a game right when it launches, I kept I kept wondering if eventually Twitch would have a bigger part to play in that, like... Because so many people are able to sort of experience a game with I you think it's starting right when it to comes happen. out. Like, GTA had 200,000 viewers on launch last night on Twitch. Oh, that's geez. a lot. That's, that's yeah. about, like, you know, a major League of Legends tournament would probably, like, maybe beat that. But that's a lot of people. So Lyric had, yeah. like, 45,000 people watching him, and there was multiple people with over 10,000 watching. And it's not Jeez. because it's a new game. GTA GTA has been streamed for years. Everyone knows what GTA is now. They tuned in to see if the game was any fucking good on PC. Yep. And they got a lot. And City Skylines was the same. City Skylines yep. has just sold a million copies. A lot of its success is due to Twitch and YouTube. They let mm -hmm. YouTubers and Twitch guys had it about a week before reviewers. They played a bunch of the game, built a bunch of hype for the game, and then the game sold really well. Yep. And that brings us nicely on to the ESA report that we just have today, which was released. And of course, we know the Entertainment Software Association represents many, many companies. And it does some good things, some bad things. But one of the interesting things they released in this year's sales information report is, at least I assume they mean the primary factor that influences the decision to purchase a video game. I can't imagine it's the only factor. I imagine it's the primary factor. And what they said in that is that only 3% of respondents said that product reviews in magazines and on video game websites were the primary reason for them to buy a game. Only 3%. That's compared to 22% of people primarily bought a game because they thought it had an interesting premise or story. 15% of it bought it because of the price. So we're talking about people that buy on sale. 10%, right. the product is a continuation of our favorite game series. So they bought a sequel. Graphics and look is 7%. Hell, 4% is allows for multiple players in a single location. So literally, more people bought a game primarily because it had couch co-op than because a magazine said it was good. Right. Is that part of the reason why this is not stopping? Why, you know, we're not reaching that breaking point? Is it because people just don't, they don't get this information or they're just oblivious to it? Well, I thought it? that was I thought that was obvious though. I thought that was an obvious <laughs> thing that like we we are in sort of an echo chamber of everyone that we know and all of our friends are in this sure. world with us and we're like, "Oh, that's the worst and they're horrible." But for the vast majority of video game players, they're not in this same world and, and yep. let alone this industry and they just don't they're like, "It's a new game. Shit, I want something new to play. All right, I'm playing it." Like they don't mm -hmm. particularly care. It looks good. I'll try yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're totally the vocal minority. We're the over-informed oh, yeah. consumer, right? And it's funny, you know, earlier, Jesse, you were talking about, like, the, the Resistance 3 painting, right? That we love because Ollie Moss is awesome. But, like, that's a, that's a shitty fucking way to sell your game at GameStop. It isn't the yeah. guy with a gun and a girl and the alien. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's an artistic way to sell to us. And that's why that game under-delivered in terms of what they wanted. Because there are so many people that, because you see it all the time. We're like, I guess, you know, video games are just the bald white protagonist. They have all the box arts laid out. But that, there are... An exorbitant amount of people who walk in like, I haven't bought a game in a while. What's a GameStop? And they look at the covers. And they're like, oh, that's cool. And they pick it off and go. There's a guy with a cool looking gun on the cover, so I'm going to buy it. It goes back to that old, yep. uh, they wanted to put Elizabeth on the front cover of yep. Bioshock Infinite. But they put Booker with a gun. Because mm -hmm. it's like, hey, that's going to that's gonna sell better on the shelf. Yep. Which People are going to have a better idea of what you do in that game. You are a cool guy with a gun. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> and there's an attractive woman in there somewhere. Good. Yep. That's enough for some people. Cool. I can't Nailed wait for it. retail to die because it's good. <laughs> I really can't. Like games, oh. I can't wait for brick and mortar retail to die so that goes away. Because as you said, like it's part, it's part and parcel of a lot of the issues we're having at the moment. People are like, oh, well, games aren't properly representative of all minorities. Yeah, but they don't. The problem is when they try to be, they apparently don't sell. Like the marketing yeah. data is showing that apparently on the shelf they don't fucking sell. If you put Gone Home so on a shelf, no one would buy it. 
I mean, Gone Home didn't even sell that well digitally, but it sold better digitally than it ever would if it was only on a retail shelf. Ever, you know? Yeah. And there's multiple examples of games like that. And it seems like the only women they're willing to put on the front of a goddamn game these days are either guy, uh, girls in bikinis on Dead or Alive or Lara Croft. You know, because she's instantly recognizable. Uh, and- GTA 5. I yeah, mean, G- that's... that's- <laughs> That's the selfie yeah. girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sel- selfie girl is on there. Yeah, on with her eye fruit or whatever it is they call. But yeah. is, is it, did you notice that someone did a comparison uh, this week that showed apparently in 2014, 2015, the current box art trend is guy with a weapon backwards to the camera. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> Loads of games like that, and like Bloodborne was only the latest example. Stand away from the camera with a weapon of some Which sort. Thing? We've but again, so the marketing, the marketing there and the research, and this is one of those things like you see it in, in, in our little world and on Tumblr and stuff all the time. People are like, we want different, we want change. But the marketing says that all this stuff says works. that you don't. And, and the yeah. research behind the, the guy with the weapon looking away is legit insane, but amazing because it's like people, when they see that, they see a character with no face that's them looking into the distance. What challenges await? I want to know. I'm buying that game. That's literally right. the research. There it's is like science that goes into it. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, this is not, they just they didn't just pick a random piece of uh, concept art for the front. They, they put money into this yeah. to figure out what would be the best. And the problem is that clashes completely with what a lot of us would like, which is like, we want more variety in games. I think there's quite a lot of variety in games, but I'd love to see more variety in games, but more think- interesting characters. But apparently we don't, you know, market research says that people don't actually buy that. That's, I think that's you, the thing is, uh, go for it. You only have so much time and so much space to occupy the mass media, like, and what they are and what this game is. I was, you know, yesterday we were talking about the commercial for Evolve that, you know, for months, right, we had all heard about Evolve, played Evolve, and Evolve looks awesome, da da And then the commercial they put out is this, like, this group of kids running through the woods. And then at the yes. very end, one jumps down, and he's got, like, the monster outline. And they're like, Evolve. And it was like, because to a group, to somebody watching Monday Night Football, how do you explain Evolve in 30 seconds? You can, well, yeah. there's all these hunters, and there's different classes. You work together, and one of you is the monster. And he's like, no, just, you get together with your friends, and you fuck around. There you go, Evolve. And there's a monster it's involved. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it's, it's, marketing is fascinating. It really is. Yeah. Unfortunately, marketing marketing also caters to the majority of people. Yep. You know, and uh, that's something yeah. you can't you can't just pretend that demographics don't exist. They do. Well, that's the that's the thing that I think people misunderstand about marketing is that um, PR and marketing isn't about trying to change things. It's not about mm-hmm. trying to to shift anything in a better direction. It's not yes. about trying to help our perspectives shift. It's about what do you want right now? That's my job. What do you want right groups. now? I will fulfill that. Yeah. And that's that's the problem with it. And I think every time you see an article, an opinion piece, a, a Tumblr post, that's like, this needs to change in gaming. This aspect of what we do needs to change. You, I always am like, I am totally with you. The marketing PR people are the ones you need to convince, not me. And Don't the, convince there's me. only one way to there's convince no- them, and it's not by yelling on Tumblr. It's by giving them yeah. money. It's, you've got you to, whenever a game, game comes along like that, you've got to support it. You full have circle, to support it. Full circle, back around yeah, to like, yeah. your wallet makes a huge difference. Your wallet does make a huge difference. And it's only when a bunch of wallets are on the same page that people notice a change. Yeah, because it's uh, what you're saying is true. It's it's the marketing PR people who care, but they only care because the board of directors and the shareholders care. They see so the they're biggest. the ones. That's why every fucking announcement for a 2K game comes from the 2K financial call, right? Because that's when they have to say, we got a GTA coming up soon. Don't worry, guys. Don't panic. You know what I mean? Yeah, the thing you that don't have to pull your stocks talk. just yet. You know, you can, yeah. you can you know, our stocks are going to go up, so you keep your money in our, in our company. Absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah, that, that's the reality of the problem right now. You know, it's a demographic and marketing issue. And it doesn't matter how, ma- how much hand-wringing and navel-gazing people do. It's not going to do a damn thing. Until the money starts going to those places, I'm afraid. What is, na- what is navel gazing? What is navel gazing? gazing? Yeah. You know, you've never heard navel gazing. Well, it's I'm not about looking at warships. I don't know what that is. Urban dictionary. I'm, I'm literally yeah. imagining somebody staring navel at a belly button. Self indulgent like, or excessive contemplation of oneself for a single issue at the expense Holy of a wider shit. view is that what is navel gazing is. Yeah. You really thought he made it up? <laughs> no, I didn't yeah. make that up at all. No. I, I know. I, I'm British well aware. Thing. Yeah. I thought it was like a British thing. You know. Oh no, absolutely not. It's not. And we've had a lot of navel gazing in the past year in the games industry, but unfortunately, it all seems to just completely ignore the reality of the demographics, which is the people that buy AAA games are predominantly, unfortunately, males of a certain age demographic 
and they are the ones driving the market because they are the ones who are spending the money. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that will, that, that's how capitalism that works. Change, yeah, unless you reach those guys, which they're not interested in what the hell we're doing right now, unless you reach them, it, it, change is going to be a long, hard struggle because they're the ones who buy 90% of the video games out there. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it's the same reason why most action movies are marketed towards men, because men yep. are predominantly the consumers of that, and why romance movies are marketed towards women, because women are the primary consumers of that. But it would be nice to see more crossover, because there are, you know, it would be cool to see action movies that were marketed to both. You know? Why, yep. why is it that I, when, you know, I ask my wife to watch an action movie with me, and it's like, ugh, you know, a lot of the time. And she'll watch a different kind of movie to me. It's like, yeah, but what if they, if they made this change and this change, you'd probably watch this action movie with me, right? And it's like, yeah. It's like, so it would be nice to see a little bit of experimentation and support But that's that. hard. That's hard. It is They hard. just want to make money and it's be done hard. and just make more Transformers movies with more robot heaven. That's all they want. Well, I mean, I feel like I feel like it's the, the problem is on both sides. Like, it's the, the publishers and the developers are like, oh, it's too hard. And then the guys complaining about it when they're asked, well, why don't you just make your own games? It's like, well, that's hard. We just want, we yeah. want you to change existing stuff. It's like, yeah, but a lot of people like existing stuff. But, but yeah. it's too hard to make something new. Why don't we change something that already exists? Because people like that thing that already exists. Why fuck with mm -hmm. it? Make something new. Hmm. Ideas. <sighs> All right. Anything else in the news that we're interested in having a quick look-see at? I think that's pretty much about it, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Let's do releases, releases and then let's... Hmm? Yeah, releases and wrap the show up. Let's do that. Sounds good. Perfect. Okay, so this is going up to the 20th yep. of April. So today, aka April 14th, we have Age of Wonders 3 Eternal Lords expansion for PC. That is a bad day to release your expansion for Eternal for Age of Wonders on. Holy crap. You've got a lot if of competition. If you're a PC game, don't put anything up today. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. don't. I mean, this we is a bad day for both man. Titan Souls and Age of Wonders to release their, their stuff. It really is. Oh, you were super like not jamming on Titan I, Souls, huh? I don't like it. I don't like it. It is it is it is one weapon, a roll, and bosses. And that to me is not enough. I can see why some people would like it, but to me it's like where's the rest of the game? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. By the way, Titan Souls came out today for PS4 and PlayStation Network Vita. And Dodger really likes it, and I hate and it. And I, well, I, I don't hate it, it. I, I just don't like it, it at at PAX. Yeah. So it might it might feel more repetitive once I'm like sitting and like really trying to get you have into one it. But fucking arrow. Well, who the yeah. fuck goes to fight Titans with one fucking arrow? This guy's utterly guy. unprepared. Woefully unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea what uh, he's doing. Next up, of course, is Grand Theft Auto V yep. for PC. Mm -hmm. uh, Mortal Kombat X for PC, PS4, Xbox One, PS3, and Xbox 360. Uh, Color Guardians for PS4 and PlayStation Network Vita. I don't know what that is. Color Guardians. I haven't heard of that one. Uh, I hope it's about Color Guard, please. No, it's it, you're playing as like... Little Rayman kind of creatures. It's a side scroller, right? And you eat I, things. It's kind of yeah. cute. It's very colorful, certainly it's as like, you would have expected it to be. But it almost looks like a like every screenshot I see. It looks like an infinite runner. I uh, I don't know if it's an infinite runner, but I, 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 I I'm not seeing anyone stopping at, though. Yeah, every hmm. screenshot I look at, it's like you're in either a mine cart or you're running down a road. But it looks like there are three lanes and you're running against the other players. Question mark? Question? This is like, yeah, the, the, <laughs> you're really delivering the news. <laughs> We're like, well, we're all trying to decipher screenshots. Yeah, you, you're right, you are right. It, what this section it is. does seem to be a runner. <laughs> it seems like you can't stop because they're talking about on the website switching between lanes and uh, swapping colors, but yeah. you keep go you keep moving. So it is. It's, oh yeah, I saw this one on PlayStation Blog. Yeah, you keep moving no matter what. Yeah, it's half. So it's half platform, a half runner, by the looks of it. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, A Train City Simulator for 3DS. You missed Titan. Oh, Souls. the old A Train. You I missed Titan, Titan Souls. Y yeah. No, because I we already mentioned it. I already okay, said it. fine. But you're not doing it in the order that it's written. <laughs> I know, but since we already touched on it, I was like, by the way, Titan Souls came out for PS4. Disgusting, and unprofessional. Us today. No, I was efficient. Mommy, daddy, something. <laughs> so, A Train City Simulator is a cross between a social experience and deeply involved city building simulator with a heavy emphasis on keeping your town connected and its transportation flowing smoothly. Apparently, you're the boss, yep. according to this. Mm. 
So there you Everybody go. Everybody watched SimCity fuck up, and they're like, now we're going to do it. <laughs> now we're going to fucking nail it. A-Train's yeah, old, man. I mean, A-Train's been around for a long time. This is just the latest one. Now, A-Train, I remember being on, like, you could play it on DOS, for God's sake. It was that Jesus. old. Yeah, so they got a lot of stuff. I might have a look at this. I like transportation games, like where you're building, uh, you're building transportation routes and things like that. I find those very satisfying. I'll give that a shot. Why not? Give it a look. Uh, next up is Bloxic, B-L-O-X-I-Q, for PlayStation Network Vita. It is a puzzle game involving cubes, which shouldn't really I'm surprise shocked. many people. Yes. Yep. Vita gets another puzzle game. Well, I suppose it's better than the random Japanese games they keep getting from time to time. Like Criminal Girls, for instance. This appears to be yeah. like Rubik's Cube, the video game, actually. It's a bit weird. It has mm. some, like, Rubik's Cube twisting mechanics involved. Weird. It's nicely colorful. I'll give it that. April 16th, we've got Westerado Double Barreled for PC. That's that kind of arena shooter thing, isn't it? I think right. so. It's got a uh, I thought it's an adult style. swim game, right? Yes. Yeah, I thought it yeah. was more of a, like, sort of story -y game. Oh, I, I must have been thinking of, a... uh, of something else. Yeah. Yeah, this is a... It's a Wild West game with lots of shooting in it. And knowing Adult Swim, it's probably balls to the wall hard, I'd imagine. Probably wall hard, yeah. They love tormenting people with their games these days. All right, um, what else we got? This next one is called Elementary My Dear Majesty for PC. I'm looking oh. it up right Looks now. like a, uh, I would say a point puzzle and click? game. Like, like a point and click, but you're looking for stuff. Like, what, it's you're a looking for game? Waldo. Uh, oh, it's, it's on Big yeah. Fish Games. That means it's a fucking hidden object game. I can guarantee it. The king's daughter has turned into a man-eating monster, and either you find the cure, or it's off with your head in elementary, my dear magistry. Mm. Explore gorgeous 3D locations and solve cunning puzzles to learn the truth behind the princess's less than fashionable new look. Scour amazing hidden objects Aha, scenes I knew and it. solve tricky puzzles to find a cure and save yourself from a beheading in elementary, my dear majesty. Every yeah. time you Google a game and the first result is bigfishgames.com, you know that motherfucker is hidden a object. hidden object game. I guarantee sure. it. Yeah. Uh, next game is called Redstone Online for PC. Okay, I've never heard of that one. I apparently everyone's talking about Redstone, like Redstone being out for years and years and years, like it's, seven years. It was released in two thousand and four. It was a Korean game. Uh, that's why the, the Koreans are uh, kind of uh, converting a lot of games over now for Western audiences. But yeah, it came, Redstone came out in two thousand and four. It's a two D MMO basically. They're okay. hyping up Redstone two now. Which I think is interesting. Yeah. And then they're releasing that. By the way, Redstone 2. Ladies looking anime fantastic. That looks, that sounds like Korea, all right. Yeah, a lot of Korean oh, games thanks. do have that particular style of woman. But <laughs> Good work. Yeah, Keep yeah. That, so that would explain it. That's why. So Redstone is, yes, it came out in 2004 and it's being globally re-released. Sure. Oh. I mean, they just did that with Dungeon Fighter, didn't they? They just brought Dungeon Fighter out again. So there's lots yeah. of that going on. I want to play more Dungeon Fighter. That was a fucking great game. Uh, the next awesome. game is called Telepath Tactics for PC, Mac, and Linux. So that I actually was a played Kickstarter this. game, right? Yeah, I played this a long time ago. I think it was at PAX 2012. It is very similar to Fire Emblem and Shining Force. It's got it looks like it. Yeah, it actually looks like it as well. It actually looks like one of the old school games like that, but it's actually got a surprising amount of depth to it. Like, if you're interested in tactics games, like RPG tactics games, Telepath does a pretty damn good job of it, at least based on what I played two years ago. It may have changed since then, but if you're interested in the old school style of tactics RPGs, then that's a pretty good game. Oh, uh, this just in. Mm -hmm. boop 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 um, Hearthstone is now on phones. Yes, it just came out iOS on iPhone. and Android. Yep. The addiction Dear continues God. for many. Yeah. Cool. So what else? That. Anyways, uh, Donkey Kong 64 for Wii U. Yay. Uh, 404 Site for PC. What the I don't hell know what that is, is that? Looks like a <laughs> polygon. You're inside in the web runner. kind of game. It's a 3D runner is what it is. Okay. Of course. Yep. Of course. Uh, uh, Gratuitous Space Battles 2 yeah. for PC. Gratuitous what? Space Battles was a lot of fun. Like if... 
It's for the Star Trek nerd in all of us. You build ships and you watch them fight with lots of fucking lasers and colors. Holy shit. It's a <laughs> Look at the screenshot. Oh yeah, the screenshot's ridiculous. It is like, hey, there's like lasers everywhere. It's, yeah, it's insane. Uh, Couture Space Battles 1, I actually enjoyed it a lot. It's weird because you make the ships and then they fight. So you've got to build the ships that kind of counter the other ships. You can give some basic orders at the start, but outside of that, you literally watch them fight. So it's... It's actually really interesting. I liked it a lot, because if you love building ships and designing stuff, then Gratuitous Space Battles is all about that. <gasps> Gratuitous Space Battles Steam Community has Star Wars uh, add-ons to the game. Oh, yeah. You can get a Super Star Destroyer. Yep. Oh, yeah. They custom <laughs> they did. That was like the first thing people did when Gratuitous Space Battles came out, is they modded Star Wars into it, which makes perfect sense. A Super Star Destroyer. Oh, oh yeah. Jesse, you sweet nerdling. <laughs> I just saw, I clicked the picture and was like, oh, look at all the guns on it. <laughs> uh, on April 17th, Mana Collect comes out for PC. It is literally an anime version of Minesweeper. Seriously, Perfect. that's what it is. That's the game. I'm in. I'm it's in what we've Sweeper all been with... waiting for, right? Yeah. So that's what right. I've been demanding. That's, it. It, that's Minesweeper one? with anime girls and some weird battle mechanic. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. Yep. I'm in. Is it like Honey Pop anime girls? No. Or is it like. No, no, not <laughs> no. Way no. more clothes. Look, Way I'm more reasonably Jesse. dressed. I would have swept those minds, but now I'm out. <sighs> Disgusting. It looks like, but it looks like you're going against somebody, like it's versus. Yes, it's a versus thing. So, hmm. I don't yeah. know how that works. Oh, well. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, probably, I don't know, is, uh, on April 20th, Crystal Rift for PC. Looks quite similar to, um, Grimrock, in the sense that oh, it's one right. of those first-person tile-based dungeon crawlers. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like a classic thing like Dungeon Master and so on and so forth. You have to, like, apparently you have to, like, build your own map and stuff. There's a lot of traps and things to be worried about, all sorts of nasty stuff like that. That's Crystal Rift. It was a Kickstarter game. Cool, that's go. it. That's yeah, it that's until it. next Tuesday. Indeed. Did it. We did. Fantastic. Thanks for watching the somewhat shortened version of the Quartial Podcast. But before we go, we'd absolutely love to just plug you as hard as we possibly can. <laughs> yes. Sorry. <laughs> the look on the face. Greg, why don't you start with uh, why don't you start with you? Tell tell people where they can find you on a very regular basis, I believe. You're doing a show on pretty much every day. Yeah, every day, every weekday, we have something on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. It's called Colin and Greg Live at 11 a.m. Pacific time, where we run through the nerdy news of the day, talk to the chat, hang out, give away stuff. And then, of course, at kindoffunny.com, you can get all of our YouTube content. We have Let's Plays every day, podcast breakouts every day, lots of reacts lately. And we're doing a live event here in San Francisco in May, if you want to come to that. Fantastic. And you can also check out their YouTube channel, which is also Kind of Funny Games. Right, there's Kind of Funny and Kind of Funny Games. It's all up there. Yes, it's all available over there. So On the internet, in, in the air somewhere. Yep, and if you wish, you can follow Greg on Twitter as Game Over Greggy is the name there. Fantastic. Thank you. Jesse. You plugged me well. You're a good plugger. That's why we're good. We're very good at plugging. We like to plug all of our guests so they leave satisfied. Jesse. I'm very satisfied. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Would you like <laughs> he a does love to plug. <laughs> He's very a cigarette. good at it. I just got plugged. I need a cigarette. <laughs> Indeed you do. Of course you do. Jesse. Uh, this week I am out in Poland, but, uh, <laughs> I have, I have uploaded a bunch of Book of, Un Un Book of Unwritten Tales stuff, because I know you guys were super psyched about that, and then a green light episode for a game called Spirits of Xanadu is coming up Saturday, and then probably a video of Dodger and I eating weird yeah. Polish things and yeah. harassing the Witcher guys. Well, the money is on YouTube, I tell you. Eat foreign foods, get money. It's that simple. Trust me. That's the plan. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So that's it. Cool. Dodger, I guess you're doing the same thing as he is. So I will also be in Poland. Uh, Dandelion will be going up throughout the week. Also, that Charmixie game, I made like a little video on that, playing that alpha. Uh, and yeah, aside from that, going to be just going around Poland doing stuff, eating food, and seeing weird stuff. So Good. <laughs> I don't know what stuff. you expect to see. <laughs> a lot of frowns and gray buildings. That's pretty much all I've experienced. That's all I want. Poland. That's all I want. Remember to yell at them about the damn board game. 
Seriously, get it fixed so we can play it. I'll get. I'll put. I'll put it on the internet. TB for you. I'm gonna get them in a room. I'm gonna get everyone in a room. And be like, what is up with the board game? And I. Why I'll does film, the board game keep crashing? Why I'll is that? I'll film that for you. Stick it up unedited on YouTube. <laughs> and it'll just be called. It'll be a video called for TB. That's for it. Wonderful. Dust. Absolutely for, wonderful. For T believable. That's what no, be no, 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 no. Yeah. Evil, yes. I've done quite evil. enough of your making it work. Thank mine. you very much. And quite then Jesse's will be for TB. Oh, God. And they can choose which version. They're the, literally the exact same video, but people will get to choose which Shot one they want to watch. slightly different angles. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> like one camera's neck literally right next to the other one. <laughs> I don't even know why I tolerate you people. Alright, what's going up on the channel for me this week? I don't know, people keep yelling at me about GTA. It's like, tell us about the GTA port. I was like, I'm getting to that. Jesus, I've got all sorts of other things. But yes, there'll be a port report coming up fairly soon for GTA 5. I won't be doing a critique of that game because everyone fucking knows what GTA 5 is. Come on. Mortal Kombat when the bloody well fixed it, certainly. And a whole bunch of other stuff, no doubt. There'll be some Hearthstone, possibly. They'll, I might do a content patch today on this whole Mortal Kombat business. We'll see how that goes. And uh, the next clan war that we're doing is on MLG TV slash Shoutcraft. You can find that. We've got a bunch of clan wars coming up the rest of the month. April the 17th, 2 p.m. Eastern, Startail versus Root Gaming for StarCraft 2. So if you want to come and watch that, by all means. And if you miss it, YouTube.com slash TotalBiscuit is my StarCraft channel for that. And YouTube.com slash CynicalBrit is my main channel. Also, if you wish to watch me cringing horribly at Black Finnish Licorice, we got that. YouTube.com slash Jenna Bain. Uh, my wife forced me to eat it. It was terrible. What can I say? Just just <laughs> awful. Finland, what the hell is wrong with you? I don't understand. All right, folks, that is the show for us today. Big thanks, of course, to our special guest, Mr. Greg Miller, for showing up on the show today. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Absolute pleasure as well. Hope to see you back at some point. Do remember to check out his channel, Kind of Funny Games. Go and follow him on Twitter, Game Over Greggy. And we will see you next time. Good night.